Hi, this is Jonathan. So this is going to be the next phase of getting out the information that I need to get out in this time slot of existence. What is this information for? Um, is this going to be information that you are to memorize? No. And you'll understand that later. What I need to do is make perfectly clear the essentials of creation. To call them laws or any word, I, I just, for some reason, I can't find the right word. To call them laws of creation, laws of life, completely misses the point. Because if you see it as some sort of rule and regulation that you have to adhere to, that immediately means you're disconnected from creation itself. And this is the state of the world. I, I haven't personally met anybody who understands it yet, completely. That doesn't mean they're not out there, you know, but in my personal experience, I have not. And so, because of that, this next phase is required. And so you need to understand what is going on, how to get a better fix on the nature of the structural reality that you're in. And I'll do my best to impart to you what has been infused into me. But ultimately, you are going to have to seek the, the Creator itself. Of course, I mean, you're a creation. And if you don't do that, then you're, you're just artificial intelligence, and you're, you're a tumor. You're, you're part of cancer. But to say these things and not have any understanding of what they are means nothing. So what I need to be able to do, and what I am able to do, is describe it. And a lot of people say, well, so you're communicating with the Creator? Shouldn't your accent change? Shouldn't you not swear anymore? Listen, when you're dealing with the Creator, it takes what you have within your brain, your consciousness, your personality, your experience, and assembles it together from that for expression. Therefore, people thousands of years ago will express themselves on behalf of the Creator in the way that their personality was formulated then. So, I mean, you, you need to understand, individuality is a gift from from life, from creation. That's why there's a huge attempt to get rid of individuality. If you connect to the Creator, you're not suddenly going to become me. What is the point of that? You, you, you only enhance your individuality when you come in, into communication with the Creator. You copy less and less and less, and you, you just become but see, all this right now sounds like a fortune cookie until I explain some of the, the real essentials that you need to know. So let me just do that, okay? And just something about swearing. Um, swearing is not the word you use. It's the energy you emit. So, so could be a swear word depending on how I say it and what my intentions are with it. But you're all focused on structure, and that's the trap. That's the insanity. And I'm going to do my best to help you understand enough to make you realize that there is a creation force, that there is something you should be seeking. Most of my knowledge I mean, is not from any book, any lecture, any video, any movie, uh, any mentor, it is direct infusion of knowledge into me. I've had two Nobel Prize winning ideas that I know of. The second one last summer, or two summers ago, was uh, that there are no neutrons in an atom. Now, I didn't read that anywhere. I knew it. I was able to deduce it. And that information was infused into me from the creative force. And I know why there are no neutrons. I can explain it. See, trying to memorize this theory or that theory is, is missing the boat altogether. Education is purely to separate you from what you are. That's how it's set up. As a child is growing, you should, 
you could have the child have a really good understanding of what the universe is by age four, five, six. And so the next phase has to occur, which is that which gets you to see for yourself. The problem is, is you've been lied to about God, and you don't understand that yet. I mean, you, you may understand the sentence and the sentence structure, but there's so much more involved with that than most people can know yet. So what I need to get into is the very basics of uh, reality as put into my being from that which creates everything, which is me. And you're like, what? <laughs> well, it's also you. And that's going to be very hard to understand. When I say it like that, it sounds like a fortune cookie. It sounds like, uh, you know, some sort of like I should be floating, you know, on some sort of bobbing mushroom, and you know, I mean, it's uh, that's the best a human being can grasp that. Well, it's time to show you what you can grasp, and how easily you can grasp it, and we'll start with the with the nature of reality. Telling somebody that reality is an illusion is not going to do much, so I need to make that more clear to you. Since everything is that way, there is no such thing as an illusion, so therefore it cancels itself out. Put it this way, all of the cells in your body are consciously aware. Would you really want them to, to sit there and be aware of just sitting there in this structural pattern for you? just to metabolize for you and be enslaved by you to make you up knowing they're consciously aware or would you want them to be able to dream dream up a, a holographic reality that seems real so they can all interact with each other on a level that doesn't really affect you and you are happy that they could do it. I mean which which would you want do you want yourselves to be your slaves or do you want them to feel that while they're alive they get to have a life and express things and do things and interact with each other and and seem to have individual identities and all of that well sure well what I'm going to explain to you will make a lot of this pretty clear okay first of all to learn something new a lot of the reasons that uh, people have trouble with that especially science if they they are told they're not scientific is because of just that they've been told that they intimidate themselves before they hear something so that they inhibit their ability to understand so when I start speaking about this stuff I just want you to not intimidate yourself know that I will bring it around and make sure you understand Hopefully most of you that are listening to this know what an atom is. An atom would be a certain type of energy confined to a what you call a nucleus, a center area, with a complementary energy around it, bathing it, surrounding it, so that when they come together, their effect on anything in its scale of existence is neutral. So you're told in chemistry that you have protons, and you count up the protons, and you have neutrons, and then you have electrons that are orbiting the nucleus. If you get high enough up in chemistry, maybe you get into organic chemistry, which is more I mean organic chemistry is a really good one to make you understand life not if you memorize organic chemistry only if you understand it from the consciousness of the atom because the atom is conscious but they tell you you have different orbitals they give them different layer names SP DF they align the electrons um, they chart them as spinning one way and then they pair themselves to another electron within there that is coupled to it that spins the opposite way an up spin and a down spin and that's not what's occurring 
So let me explain to you what is occurring. In an atom, uh, you, you have the energy in the center. It is a certain amount of, of mass, if you want to call it that. Its existence is a combination of other energies and their interference with each other. Then you have this other type of energy. They, they give it a positive charge. They assign it, you know, like they're assigning everything here, good and bad, yes, no. They give the nucleus a positive charge and the electron cloud a negative charge. The electron cloud is the type of energy the nucleus of the atom, the, the proton, always wants to find itself inside of. Because the protons are what you would call a positive or outward energy or symbolically male energy. And it seeks to be inside the female energy which will surround and absorb. Just like with sexual intercourse, you have a male and your male organ you know, goes inside the female organ. That's why they've based electrical circuitry. They call it male and female coupling and male and female parts. Well, see, the electron cloud, that energy, is a more dynamic, complex, dimensional type of energy. And it is not particles that are flying around the nucleus. It is a fluid consciousness energy. And they say, well, well then what's an electron? electrons beaming off. Well, all that means is a certain amount of energy is allocated out and it assumes the most efficient use of space, which is a sphere. But when it comes back into an electron cloud, it delocalizes itself and becomes part of like a droplet falling into the ocean. So when they talk about certain types of energies that couple, oh, we have this upspin and downspin and different orbitals. Orbitals in an atom would be very similar to chakras on you, how they interface. And I'll get to that later. But you don't have these particles spinning around. They're only that when they need to be. For example, um, anybody that knows how to manipulate their own chi and focus their chi, maybe you've seen martial artists do this they're localizing a lot of that energy to one point which would be similar to the materialization of an electron it's not even well material just conglomeration of that energy it is not particles that are spinning if it's a fluid consciousness and you know there are different types of that energy within there then what you're dealing with really is phase and, and before I go on I really want you to understand you to understand this. This is not a chemistry lesson. I'm explaining to you what you need to know to become what you are. So this is not something you should blow off and say, oh, well, I don't need to know chemistry. This isn't chemistry. There are chemists that have looked at this and tried to quantify it, but that's not what I'm talking about. When I use the term phase, what I mean by that is well, say uh, you, you make two fists and you're throwing out punches with both arms at the same time, meaning both fists go out and then come back and then out and back. And you're looking at, say, 10 feet in front of you, how much air is displaced from that vantage point, from both fists going out at the same time, pushing air and then sucking it back as they're coming back to your, towards your chest. Compared to say if you alternate punches where the left hand is out while the right is back and then the right is out while the left is back how much air is displaced 10 feet in front of you because see if both fists are going out at the same time you have double the amplitude double the force double the amount pushing on the air and then sucking it back and creating those wave pulses in the air however if you're alternating punches as one is pushing air the other is pulling air and they cancel out their effect. That's a very good way to look at phase. If it's, and they would call that 180 degrees out of phase or opposite. As one is inducing 
force, the other is retracting force or pulling back. I, I guess uh, as one is pushing, the other is pulling. Put it that way in your mind. Well, the same thing occurs with light, sound, electromagnetic waves, thought, neural impulses. And so, yeah, it's true. If I play a 500 hertz tone to you, say directly 10 feet in front of you, they would call that zero degrees azimuth. They're always thinking in terms of 360 degrees when they're quantifying things. And say I play 500 hertz. What's really occurring is something is pushing and pulling on air just like your fist is going out and back. It's displacing the air. But 500 times per second. And then you understand, if I were to put a speaker right next to it and play 500 hertz, same frequency, meaning the same speed, it's still displacing the air 500 times per second. However, think of it like fists that go alternating out and back, out and back. As one part of the diaphragm on one speaker is pushing on the air, like one fist going out and displacing the air, the other is pulling back. They call that compression and rarefaction when you're dealing with sound. Rarefying, meaning creating a void, compression, compressing it together. Same thing with your fists going out. Well, what would happen? If one is pulling back on the air while one is pushing, and they're both 500 hertz, so they're both the exact same amount of time okay the same number of cycles per second but exactly opposite to each other or 180 degrees out of phase it's going to cancel out its effect on the air you won't hear anything and they call this phase canceling okay well the same thing now occurs with the electron consciousness it's vibratory and so it doesn't have to be something that's pushing in and out um, if frequency can be just the number of times something does something per unit of measurement of time. Those are interchangeable because time is a result of that. But think of, of it simply. So if you have part of the electron consciousness vibrating one way, and the other one that it's matched to is at the same amount of time per second, the same cycles per second, the same hertz, the same frequency, which is how many times per second it does what it does. It could be twisting back and forth, it could be oscillation, it could be, you know, up, down, to whatever. I mean, if you, blinking can be a frequency. How many times do you blink per second? How many times do you breathe per second? How many times do you think about uh, your feet per second? This is quantitative. When you're dealing with a quantum, that's an, an attempt to arrest life, that, that's dealing with how much. That's why it's funny when I hear people that, that claim to be spiritual talk about how much they like quantum physics. That's all mathematics and formulas. And, you know, they may hear someone like, say, Deepak Chopra discuss quantum mechanics and reality and then feel they understand quantum physics. No, it's not the quantum physics you like. It's the qualitative nature of life. Physics deals with the physical. What and what is affecting the physical from the, a physical point of view. But anyway, in this consciousness of the electron consciousness, I don't even like to call it electron because that implies that it's a particle. I like to call it dark energy. Not that I am embracing good and bad, light and dark, and I'll get into that, but we'll use that as a better example. As one part is vibrating, the other one will couple to it, part of that consciousness, the same frequency, but 180 degrees out of phase with it, therefore making it and rendering it neutral. This is why they tell you that an atom is 99.9% .9 empty space. It is not. The energy is there. It is just phase canceling itself out meaning there are no wavelengths of that consciousness for you to read but it has gone nowhere the observance of this will tell you why the Illuminati do what they do trying to play God by always balancing an equation to try to seek neutrality that's why they try to control good and bad 
They're trying to balance a mathematical equation, and you'll understand that later as to why that is missing it. See, what they're doing, it, it, math is not life, and that's what they embrace, numerology, structure, geometry, mathematics, numbers, quantitative elements. And because their point of view is that way, they are like, uh, what's happening right now is like that cartoon of Bugs Bunny where maybe a, link, a leak will spring and something holding water and he'll put his finger up against it and then another one will spring and he'll try to cover that and then another one springs and he'll put his nose up against it and another one springs out. Every time they try to plug a leak, another one's going to spring out. Trying to arrest the nature of life with math. That's what's happening. It's what has happened. Let's go back to an atom, though, because this is very important. So am I telling you that, that there are only two energies in an electron cloud and they phase cancel each other out? No. It's just that which is paired with another one will phase cancel it out. So how does consciousness manifest, then? Switching the phase to double the amplitude in a moment, materialization, and then switching back to phase cancel. It can pop up anywhere. And that's why people, a lot of people miss that. They, they'll watch a movie like, What the Bleep Do We Know, is it, it's called. And they say, an electron can be anywhere at any given time. No, it, it's a fluid consciousness. It's, it, it can pop up anywhere at any given time by shifting phase and interacting. And it doesn't have to shift to exactly the same. It can be 45 degrees out of phase. It can just create the amount of amplitude it needs to create an interference pattern between the two energies within it. So what happens is, yeah, you have, okay, once you get beyond the first orbital, they say, okay, you need eight electrons, eight bytes to a bit in a computer. Let me explain something to you. When you see these... UFO examples and all these UFOs that look like light come into an organized pattern and they start flickering and everybody says oh look at the neat light show <laughs> what they're doing is communicating the same way atoms within a molecule will communicate with each other they're shifting the phase to suddenly double the amplitude so that which was neutral suddenly lights up and if you are on that frequency and that time scale of an atom, when the atom communicates with itself, it would look identical to the UFOs you see flashing and, and doing the light dance with each other. If you were on that time scale and that size and had the neural system to pick up the emittance, you would see it as that. And they're demonstrating for you right there the consciousness of a molecule and an atom. Now, your mind works the same way. Interference patterns of certain amounts out of phase turning on, turning off. So, what's the deal then? Well, if you have half of this consciousness that takes on one characteristic, regardless of how many different variances you have of it, they all match the other variances in the electron consciousness and as it relates to the nucleus. Half of that consciousness, the awareness to make decisions and change what it is, to interact with the other part of itself, the other part of the electrons, to, to interact. Half of an atom's consciousness, then, is there for it to perceive itself as I, the atom. The other half, is used for something else. When atoms bond to each other, and what a covalent bond is, is the coupling of the complementary en energies within an electron cloud that take on different dimensions and different uh, characteristics. This is why if you, if you study enough chemistry, you realize it's not just straight lines. The first the first bond is very basic. The other ones take on different dimensional traits that cannot be explained with if you're looking at it from the third dimension. But say you have a group of atoms that come together to formulate a molecule. 
the part of them that are involved with bonding are used because they're conscious. They they complement each other and interfere with each other to create what's called a scalar jump. And that other half of the atom's energy is used by the molecule to see itself as I, the molecule, while each atom still has half of its own consciousness to see itself as I, the atom. So it's not, it is both. It is a group of atoms that still see themselves as I, but part of something, and know it, but maintain their individuality. And then you have a molecule that sees itself as I, utilizing the atoms. It's a different scale of existence. Then molecules can come together because they're conscious to formulate a tissue. Half of the, the consciousness of the, the molecule is used to see itself as I, the molecule. The other half is used by the tissue Every molecule in the tissue itself, half of its consciousness is used by that tissue to perceive itself as I, the tissue. And all the molecules see themselves as I, the molecules. Understand that they are we, the molecules, being used willingly, of course, by the tissue, because they still have their own individuality. And the atoms within the molecules still perceive themselves as I, the atoms, but also we, the atoms that are being used by the molecule to see itself as I, the molecule. They haven't lost any of their individuality because only half is the individuality. That's that's would be that way whether they're connected or not. So there's no reason. It's so perfectly designed. There's no reason to say, I don't want that. Well... You can go up from tissues to, say, structures like organs. Same thing. You have a field of energy you can't perceive around it because, well, we'll get to that. Half of the consciousness around the organ, the field around it, sees itself as I, the organ, utilizing everything below it the same way. Another scalar jump. Every time you go from atom to molecule, it's a jump in scale. Go from molecule to tissue, it's a jump in scale. Tissue to organ, jump in scale. Well, the next stop is I, the body. You are using half of the consciousness of all the main components of your body, which are using half of the consciousness of all the things that make them up, and down and down and down. You are using half of the consciousness of your body to see yourself as I. I don't call myself we the cells, we the atoms, we the organs. I say, I, Jonathan, right? Do you call yourself we? But you are we. And you are I. That consciousness innervates your body through different scales as well. Because you have different scales of consciousness. You have a lar the scale of your body, which, you know, innervates your body through large chakras. But if you go scale down, you have the other type of consciousness that goes through points of energy through organs. Then cells right through the DNA. DNA in your cells are not the stopping point of DNA. You are part of DNA on a larger level. You're part... Let me explain this. Up from you, what do you think the next jump up is? Your specific race of person. So... It doesn't matter what race you are. This is why certain species have, quote, the same frequency. Just like organs will have the same frequency. So you go up to your race. And you have a consciousness that says, I, this race. Utilizing half of each person involved in that race, half of their consciousness, to do so. Then you go up from there, you have the human race. All the races combined. And half of the consciousness of all the races are used by the human race to see itself as I, the human race. Well, each race has its own identity, and then each person in the race has their own identity, and each organ within that person has its own identity, and down and down and down. 
You go up from there, and you have Earth with all the life forms on Earth. And yeah, half of the consciousness of all the life forms on Earth are used by the Earth to see itself as I, the Earth. When you go up from there, you have a solar system. The sun would be like a proton, and there is dark energy around the sun you can't see. Why? Because your eyes are part of the center energy, the, the part that's inside. So it's, it's interacting with the, the wavelengths of energy that correlate to that. Protons, sun, light. This is why they would say in a song, blinded by the light. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, and granted, this is all just on this wavelength. This bandwidth of existence that you're in. This is not... Uh, I'm just using an example of the bandwidth of, of existence that you can see. So what's around the, the sun is dark energy. That's what's keeping it in. That's what's, what's surrounding the sun. As the dark energy interacts with the energy of the sun, it neutralizes it and creates orbitals, and that's where you would have the neutral energy or state of matter that life can exist, and that's what you would call the neutrons. Neutrons are only the interaction between these two types of energies, the in outward male, which is sun, again, same properties, that's why they, now you understand the Illuminati where they worship the sun, right? And they also worship the male phallus, well it's the same thing, it's the male energy. When they collide, you have that neutral point in between. If you go up to a galaxy, then all of the solar bodies in the galaxy would be the part of the, you know, that dense cluster of solar bodies inside be like the proton, and then you have dark energy around the galaxy. Now you can look up a dark energy map, and what you're going to find is that it only surrounds galaxies and connects all the galaxies together. Just like electron energy connects all the atoms together to create molecules. You can't go from galaxy to galaxy unless you follow the path of the electron, or sorry, dark energy that connects them. But since it's all confluent and all one consciousness, then yes. You, if you understand that, can communicate to any galaxy, anywhere, and anything at any scale. So when you look at a galaxy, you see that the only place that life exists are the perimeter, the outward swirls. Right? That's the area that life can stand it. That's the blending of the dark energy and the the galactic solar body energy and so in the perimeter that's where you're going to find planets that can sustain life earth is the same thing therefore with this understanding you know that the core of the earth is like a proton energy and there's dark energy around the earth when they collide you get what you call the surface of the earth that's the, the neutralizing effect, the, the interaction of the two energies to create life on Earth. But it's only where it interacts, therefore, by that knowledge, you can only conclude that the Earth is hollow. And it, the surface of the Earth is just where those two energies meet. Okay? Same thing with neutrons in an atom, then. It is the interaction between the electron consciousness and the proton consciousness. And when they collide and have interference patterns and neutralize each other, then they call them neutrons. They cannot exist in and of themselves. That is just the interaction of the two energies. And you'll go up and up and up from there. And down and down and down. This is what infinity is. If you want to think of it as a graphical analysis, a, like a sine wave, think of the, you know what a sine wave is. If you don't, look it up real quick. Imagine the longest wavelength you can imagine. Well, let's we'll just make it simple for reference. Say it's a mile. All right, a mile long wavelength. And then you just, in order, get shorter and shorter, you know, of existence of possible wavelengths until the point where you get down to it's really close together and an inch. 
say the line you draw to represent that would be one inch thick and the amplitude would be five inches meaning how high it goes up and how low it goes down two and a half above the the new you know the neutral point and two and a half inches below making five the node and anti node well if you bring it close together like that now it's only an inch apart then a centimeter apart then a millimeter apart then a micrometer apart a nanometer apart and your line is an inch thick it's gonna look like what one five inch thick line because it's so close together you can't perceive its separation anymore now imagine that starting the longest wavelength ever one huge five inch thick line going up and down and its its amplitude would be five feet going up and down and up and down and then getting it closer together closer together so you have these squiggly lines that are going up and down that start to come closer and closer and closer and closer together until what it's so close together you can only perceive it as a five foot thick line and then that starts going up and down right fifty feet up and down up and down bring it together it's pretty soon the wavelength is so short frequency in other words that that becomes a fifty foot thick line that is scalar jumping the change in scale and that is infinity I don't know if I can tell you to verify this I've never seen this information anywhere in print or video or lecture or anything this is given to me from that which I'm interacting with this is what I'm trying to tell you they tell you that God is you know the Bible and therefore you know you have to be stupid to and not question anything and not learn anything no the Creator knows all it creates everything and it's more than willing to enhance your life and give you knowledge and allow you to maintain individuality it's what it's all about you don't you become anything but stupid when you connect to the creator I've had light explain to me why is it particles and wavelengths I know why it is exactly why it is in my head there is no explanation out there scientists bumble around that well, it's either particles or wavelengths, depending on how you look at it. No, no, no. I know exactly why it is. I'm not going to get into that now. See, the beauty of individuality is, how does the Creator communicate with me? It takes what I know and things that I've encountered in life, and then assembles those things together correctly to create a thought that I understand. And if it's information that has no words yet, if it has no... Uh, I've had no experience with it. It still puts the knowledge in me, and then I'm directed to see something in life that I can extract a metaphor from to explain what I know. That's how it works. It doesn't change your personality. It doesn't, I mean, it has no interest in that type of control. There's only one energy that has interest in that type of control. And that's what we got to get to next. Okay, what is cancer? Well, what is it? People can assess it and, uh, you know, they can say, well, it can be a virus that inserts an oncogene, which is a cancerous gene in there, or a vibration that triggers the, the turning on of an oncogene. Or, you know, you could sit in ultraviolet light and, uh, you know, or have some sort of damage done and there are different repair mechanisms of DNA. You have basic repair, but if the damage is too bad, you have what's called gross repair, and you just start inserting base pairs of DNA, and sometimes it's incorrect. Usually the cell dies, but occasionally a cancer gene is created. Trauma can create cancer. What happens? Well, an oncogene, what is that doing? It's transcribing, as they know, an enzyme that renders the cell immortal and uh, causes it to met metastasize and try to take over the body uh, to, to grow and grow and grow and grow. The cell has a normal life cycle that it goes through, but cancer violates that with, immortal excuse me, with immortality. But that's just what it's doing. It has nothing to do with why. It is only what. 
Again, structure, math, quantity. If you know a cell is conscious, and DNA is its system of, of uh, how, how would you look at DNA? Um, the same way you would look at the components in your body? That's part of it. It's the structure, the, the, the brain, the... My comparison of the DNA, what I contribute a lot of DNA to, would be the liver in the body. Liver has twice the DNA of all the other cells, and it produces over 90% of your blood plasma proteins. It's, it's involved with so much. That would be a scalar jump of DNA to me. The liver. The liver is the most alive organ in the body. The brain is the most dead. The liver can regenerate. Your consciousness is not so much confined to the brain. Only for your five senses and in, in that input and then other things, thinking and whatnot. But your thoughts occur throughout your entire body. And around your body, more specifically. Cancer is an insane energy, but it's not its fault. It is separate from this whole system that I'm talking about, this scalar reality of existence. And it doesn't understand that as it grows, it's going to destroy its own ability to live. So there's only one conclusion you can make, and that's absolute fear. A disconnection somehow from the love the consciousness, the understanding, the knowing of why it exists, the beauty of its, of its existence and everything. And the consciousness alters the DNA of the cell because it feels isolated, alone, and separate. If you damage a cell and it's trying to resist the death, imagine the fear of uh, how it's played out if a cell is dreaming or it gets damaged by something. And it gets so damaged that it's traumatized. The consciousness is going like crazy trying to repair it and whatnot. And then it, uh, it creates a resonance because of fear. It, 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 it's so traumatized, this is just one instance, that it can't remember anymore. It doesn't believe in the system. How can this be happening? And its defense to its fear is to try to take control, anger, aggression. Suddenly, the consciousness is played out between cells that, uh, hey, no, you're part of us. No, I'm not. I don't trust you, any of you. It becomes immortal. It, it creates that gene. It starts to use more abilities than it should in relation to other cells. It starts to hurt them. And the consciousness grows in scalar relation. From, and this starts at the atomic level, people, below. Next thing you know, it's tissue that it's focused on, rather than the cell. It tries to take over the tissue. It doesn't care about the tissue. That's why you have a lesion. It's a war. It's killing other cells. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a lesion or an ulceration. And then the consciousness goes after other cells to try to make them cancerous to grow in the body. And it, and it would have to seduce the cell to leave the system it's already part of by traumatizing it, seducing it. Look what I can do. Look, I'll scare you. Look, I could kill you right now. But look, do you want what I can do? And the cell has no idea the cancer just wants to take it over so it can make another scalar jump, so it can use it to see itself as I, and that is it. That's what cancer is. The body tries to attack it because it recognizes that it's a foreign resonance now. It just becomes an internal battle. But when you correlate what happens with cancer, and I have, of people that have spontaneously healed, or they call it spontaneous remission, They've all done different things. There are people that try procedures. I'll take 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, like Linus Pauling suggested. 
I'll take homeopathy, homeopathic remedies. I'll do yoga. I'll do this. I'll do that. And so there are very different people that have done these different procedures that have avoided chemotherapy and radiation treatment, which is just another war. And these people that have healed themselves from cancer all report having, it doesn't matter what their procedure was, they all report having this experience of infinity and understanding of the scale of reality. Whether they can say it in the same way I'm doing it doesn't matter, they know it. And they try to ex express it to people the best way they can. I just knew I was part of a whole loving system, a perfect system. And that, the whole body, re, you know, attached to that. And that was used to convince the energy animating the cancer cells that, hey, you were part of me. I love you, man. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing to be scared of. I'm sorry this happened. It was nobody's fault. Come back. And finally what happened is that energy made that leap of faith within your body, came back to you. Everything was fine. The cancer cells are shed. And when this spontaneous remission thing happens, it happens. It can happen in 24 to 48 hours. It's like snowballs melting on a stove tumors just go no chemicals can do that no medicine no chemotherapy no radiation treatment no immune system this is something different and cancer is something different it's separation when the cancer recruits other cells what well how does it do it ultimately it uses all the tactics to scare it intimidate it uh, seduce it entice it what ultimately happens when it becomes a cancer cell is what? Well, remember, each cell has its own consciousness, and part of that consciousness sees itself as I, and the other part is utilized by you to see yourself as I, or the organ to see itself as I, that type of deal. Cancer disconnects it from that and plugs into it, so it still has its own individuality, but the other part of it is used by the cancer consciousness to see itself as I. It unplugs you from the cell, from you, and plugs into the cell to see itself as I. And that's what a tumor is. Now, your cells obviously are connected to you in more ways than just consciousness. There are other dimensions, other realms. When it becomes overwhelmed by cancer, it forgets that until people have this scalar, you know, this event of infinity of understanding. That's the connection to the Creator, the love, that which created everything. And your beacon of a problem is responded to by the Creator. Now here's the deal. Time is related to scale as well. Time for an atom is not the same amount of time for you. It's vibrating way too fast for you to perceive. So. Even time for, like, say, a fruit fly. Oh, it only lives 24 to 48 hours. What a short life. Well, not to it. If it's on a different frequency, a different scale of existence, that could seem like a much longer period to it. That's why man has trouble trying to swat a fly. Oh, that's because it has a neural strip on its abdomen, and so it just uh, reflexes, you know, it has a reflex to your movement, and displacement of air. No, you're moving really slow to that fly. <laughs> And because your relationship of time relates to your perception of depth, if you're on, say, one side of a room that has a 15-foot distance between two walls and you look at that, you perceive it in relation to your frequency of existence, your relation to time, and that's how you perceive depth. It will take me two seconds, three seconds to get to the other side. However, a fly looks 15 feet across the room and it's relationship to time, its relationship to depth is different. Even though it may arrive there faster than you, it does not seem that way to the fly. It sees it as a very long distance away compared to how you perceive it. Imagine being a giant that's uh, 800 feet tall, standing on top of a mountain. Well, how far apart would those mountains really seem to you if you were that big? much closer together than you would perceive it as your size, right? But say you were able to run to the other mountain or somehow move yourself with wings faster than the giant could get there. Or observe the giant walking from mountain to mountain 
as a human and seeing a giant that big, it may look really slow to you, but its perception of time is just normal. It's just right. So you would appear to be really fast to it. That's why larger things may appear to move slower, but from their relationship to time, they're not moving as slow as you perceive them to be. So even something like a cat will have a slightly, you know, just a slightly different perception of time than you. You are slower to your cat than, than uh, you know, it is to you. That's why a cat is more able to quickly grab a fly out of the air. It's not that it perceives itself to be moving any faster than it would if it were your size. It's just moving just right. What it's able to do, the fly is moving slower to the cat than it is to you. Do you understand? And so what this creative love force, I'll call it God, okay? It's, uh, it's easier to just say God for now. That's not what it is, but I'm just going to call it God for simplicity. Um, God immediately put into my mind that the whole idea of physics and chemistry in the periodic table is missing one element for quantitative. Not that that matters, but, and that is the element of time. Which, you know, is just that. It's, it's, uh, the, the scalar jump from atoms to molecules to tissues to everything is missing the element of time. Why, why am I telling you this? Well, so if you know that, then if you go through some sort of uh, cancer in your body, and even if you have a spontaneous remission that took 48 hours amazingly fast for the tumors to dissolve, from your cell's point of view, that was not 48 hours. That was a long, drawn-out process. And then when the spontaneous remission happened, it was just as instantaneous for the cells as it was for you, and that's the, the true nature of love and God, is that it's instantaneous. It will have a scalar effect all the way down. The cancer was healed immediately. The process of shedding the cells is like cleanup. After the other energy abandoned those cells. That's all that is. The cancer, when it healed, was instantaneous. Everything else was just clean up in the bodies, you know, getting rid of the tumor. What is occurring right now on this level is cancer. You have a consciousness. Let me just back up here so you understand some of these things. Why am I saying it the way I am saying it? Well, one, I'm supposed to say it like this. This is something everybody needs to know. Am I the first person that's talked like this or known this? Of course not. Everybody's connected to, well, can connect to God. You're going to find out most of you have been uh, disconnected in a lot of ways, but they haven't been able to disconnect every way, of course. Otherwise, cancer itself could not spontaneously heal. But, um, again, when, when God commands the mind, it's, it takes what is in your mind, your personality, your experiences, and puts it together around the truth. And if you don't have the words for it, it will direct you to an experience where you can extract a metaphor. This is the beauty of individuality and how it embraces that. So an artist can say what I'm saying in a picture. A musician can write a song that expresses what I know with notes. God will interve it'll intervene and command and embrace the individuality of everybody with the truth. It's the beauty of everything. So you'll, the people, that's the beauty of individuality. As people, it's going to be so neat because as people start to um, learn this stuff through connecting to the Creator, and it's going to happen, you're going to see all these really neat, different individual expressions because God took in them you know, and, and assembled in them the understanding through their point of view. It's already happening in a lot of ways. It's fantastically wonderful. And that and it's gonna go against this whole idea of cloning, getting everybody to dress alike, talk alike, act alike, think alike, all of these things. That goes against the nature of God. God wants that individuality. Otherwise everything's boring. So now you, you start to have 
an understanding of you know somewhat of the scalar nature of your reality. Now I know I used the example of half of your consciousness used for yourself and the other half being used by something larger. And that was just a way to get you used to the idea, but it, it's a little bit different from that. You can look at it, uh, you know, this is also another basic example, but uh, I'll give you an idea of roles of your hmm, existence in scalar reality. A very basic example could be, okay, eight electrons, right, in an electron orbital uh, of an atom. So eight energies, uh, four pairs of couplings, different frequencies that phase cancel each other out or alter their their phase and amplitude um, for interaction, interference patterns. One way you could look at that would be uh, say you make the pointing sign with your fingers, the number one sign with both hands, and then point your fingers at each other, leaving about a centimeter in between the two tips, about eight inches in front of your head. Now what you find is if you change the focus of if you change the focus of your your viewing that, you can change it so that it appears as if you have two fingers and a floating little finger in between them. What is that really? Um, they're both transparent as far as your focus is concerned, but when they interfere with each other, it looks like uh, there's a piece of mass there. That's how your eyes are seeing it. Um, and that's a good example of interference patterns, of standing waves. It's basically what your body is, a combination of all kinds of standing waves, of interferences, of different parts of the energies. But you'll find if you do that, and you hold your fingers that way, and you see the, the finger floating in between your right hand and your, your left hand, you don't have to move, you don't have to change anything other than your concentration, your allocation to how you're going to perceive that. And with focus you can learn to see just your right finger and right hand without changing anything, without moving anything, or you know, anything, just change in, in perception. Then you can see your left hand. Then you can see it all together. You can see both hands completely with both fingers and the floating finger uh, but with no gap in between it, so it's not floating, you see everything at once. So that's four different ways to see the same thing from this fixed point of view. That could be a good analogy for consciousness of your scalar relationship. Uh, it isn't exactly like this, but generically as a model, you could see your consciousness then, rather than now seeing it as half for you and half for that using you, you could see it as the floating finger, like the first example, that's what everybody's locked into right now. Uh, they see themselves as the floating finger, not knowing that they're an interaction between two different types of energies. All right, That's what everybody believes. They believe they're this floating finger and have no comprehension. Uh, imagine if your floating finger, when you do that, was self-aware, had no idea you were the one intending to do that, that you were holding your hands that way, it just saw itself as the floating finger, without any comprehension of how it's there or why it's there. But if you weren't attacked like this, um, and you were operating correctly, you would also be able to see yourself, for example, as say we'll just use the right hand where you can shift it to where you see the right hand and finger, which would be seeing uh, yourself from the consciousness point of view of the components that make you up and down and down and down from there. Shifting to your left finger, metaphorically, could be seeing yourself as part of something larger. And then the final completion of the valency of an orbital of an atom, which would be having eight full electrons, uh, you would be allowed that fourth point of view, which is 
seeing everything or being aware of everything at once if you choose. It's that last uh, state of mind that animals can go into that uh, you know every creature on this planet unaffected by this agenda and what's happening uh, is allowed to do people that have spontaneously healed from cancer have gone into that mode and so it had of course a scalar effect of the consciousness making them up and their relation to higher and so the energy you know animating the cancer cells realized disconnected from those cells rejoined your energy and then those cells are shed you start to understand then what what is matter um, you know the surface of the earth is the interaction between the the core which could be like a proton nucleus of an atom and the dark energy around the earth which you call the magnetic field even though it's in shells or rings that move like a conveyor belt through the center of the planet just like the energy in your body does that it's like uh, you know, a long donut where it can just you know, move through your body that way. Well, the Earth has that the rings and orbitals of dark energy around it too, so the orbits around the Earth are already there. That's what the Moon is in. What are the different atoms, though? Well, what are the different life forms on this planet? You see, say you took your hand and put it into a sandbox and scooped up some sand. I must pretend that sand is the proton energy, the um, ignited energy, the male energy. I, when I say proton energy, to me it means protons, or that energy in a nucleus of an atom, the core of the Earth, the sun, the collection of solar bodies in a galaxy with dark energy around it. That's what I mean. That's the material mass and so your eyes react to the energy that would come from the center energy that comes from inside this female consciousness energy female not gender um, just nature so you pick up some sand and your hand would be metaphorically the dark energy that interacts with that sand you can't pick up more sand than your hand can hold so Say you have a very complex amount of frequencies in this dark energy around Earth. Each different wavelength, if you break it apart into individual waves, you know, you have a complex waveform, and even this whole concept of Fourier transforms, I'm sure it was an understanding of this. My voice could be broken apart into individual sine waves. Well, so each one is interacting with the energy emitted from say the core and each frequency or wavelength is the is just that it's uh, how much is interacting so it'd be like scooping my hand and grabbing this amount of sand and whipping it somewhere and then scooping more and it's always pretty much the same amount right because that's what my hand can carry For, forget about a heaping pile of sand but just say I grab the same amount every time because of what my capacity is well if you have a longer wavelength you could consider that as uh, a larger hand or say a shovel now that goes into the sand and grabs more of the sand and uh, then you know a garbage can goes in and grabs some sand and, and you know, fills it up it's how much is it's 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 how much of the dark energy in the specific frequency is interacting with this center energy creating an interference pattern this is where atoms come from well gee why would we have a huge heavy atom and uh, why would we have smaller atoms and then the atoms themselves are complex waveforms making that up so when you're dealing with uh, all of the parts of the interaction then you would be dealing with frequency and amplitude or the wavelength and amplitude so now you can start to consider things like uh, is the sand in my hand heaping or not for example the color red is the color red how intense that color is depends upon the amplitude are you picking up a heaping scoop or not that's what waveform interaction is 
So you understand that the basics of it would be the size of the interaction. I see it in my head. It's very hard for me to say verbally, though. You have a complex waveform interacting with another complex waveform and, and infinite complex waveforms interacting. Then the amplitude would be, in the case of a hand picking up sand, is it a heaping pile or is it just a leveled off pile? This is the very nature of your thinking process. Amplitude and interaction of wavelength. Uh, it's, it all comes down to that. You start to understand this energy is in frequency. Now, so is the energy in the proton nucleus. So is the energy in the sun. The sun has very basic components in it or wavelengths. Ultimately, what I'm telling you is if it's coming in pulse and everything is an interference pattern and so on a different level it's an interference pattern which is making up the atoms that are burning in the sun then it has to have a frequency and the frequency is the interaction of the two energies therefore the components of the sun like everything are in frequency and what that frequency means in that case is frequency of existence meaning the sun is there and then it's not and that it's there and then it's not and then it's there and then it's not it depends upon the specific atoms so there's always parts that are there when others aren't and, and such but it's so the the frequency to you would be at the atomic level which is too fast for you to observe so you know, if I'm telling you that the sun is there and not 100,000 times per second or something like that, you know, you're not going to be aware of that because you are there and then you're not and then you're there and then you're not. But why wouldn't you notice that? Because every component you're locked into as the floating finger is built upon that groundwork. If I took a a wall and was able to vibrate that wall say in your home back and forth one foot back one foot forth one foot back so uh, the distance of movement and did that fast enough you could just go lean up against that wall and you wouldn't even know it was moving the wall would appear to be one foot thicker than it is. You wouldn't know. If I start to vibrate it to the point where you get to the threshold of your very vibration as a person, then you can't, you can't assess that. So this is where, now where did I learn this? Again, you need to understand. Did I read this somewhere? No. Did I watch a lecture? No. Was it a professor or teacher that told me? No. What, did I find it anywhere? Uh, from information in this realm? No. Sitting in the backyard in the summertime underneath a tree. You see, the, f the problem with religion is you all equate that with God somehow. And it works well on intelligent people which are what they want to get rid of uh, because they see the people that are brainwashed by religion and equate that to God and think, well, gosh, if these are the people that believe in God, I can't believe in God. Because they don't think I ask them to explain it to me and they can't give me an answer. And then they abandon the whole thing altogether. Uh, the creator of the universe is anything but stupid. It is everything there is. And you cannot connect to the creator via religion. It's impossible. So I asked a simple question. I said, okay, well, explain light to me then. Scientists say that light is either particle or waves, depending on how you look at it. It put into my mind, making me understand, okay, look at the sun. Now you know the, as it's dealing with me, not in words, you can't understand the communication until you understand the command of love. Um, the sun, make it very basic for you, okay? 
let's get rid of the complex waveforms and, and multiple waveforms. Let's just say the sun itself is there, and then it's not, and then it's there, and then it's not, so many times per second. Well, what that means then is that it's, when it's emitting light, that is also in pulse. Because the components that make it up are there and not and there and not. And then the sun is built up off of that and it actually is there and not and there and not on a different level. So the energy emitted from the interaction of atomic forces when it leaves takes the most efficient uses of, of space which would be a sphere and it spurts out based upon the buildup okay light emittance and then emittance and then a refractory and then buildup of energy and emittance refractory buildup of energy emittance so imagine like like the spraying of bullets not to put that image in your head but I mean that's just a bunch of raindrops coming down and a stream, a stream of, you can call them photons, whatever they've wanted, whatever label they've wanted to put on them. And there are other components too. So that would be particle, right? But how does that take a wavelength? And how many different um, carrier wavelengths are there? Well, they know it's a stream, which is a frequency, the number of photons, you learn that with the eyes, the number of photons hitting the eye measurement of time, we'll call it a second. They're interchangeable. But we'll just say that's what it is. Okay, so just say that you have a stream of photons hitting you. Alright, just how many times they activate, you know, within the, uh, you know, the range of your frequency. Now you understand why you have a frequency range of vision. You have a fundamental frequency of existence. And then your nerves can react to a certain amount of, uh, you know, I, I mean, if, if, it, if the number of photons hitting your eye per second exceeds the amount uh, that your neuron, your rods and cones can react to, think of a, a, a speed bag where you hit in boxing is do 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 if you start hitting it too fast it doesn't have any rebound it's just going to stay there and because your sensory perception is on off on off or frequency and how many times that happens per second if it just is too fast or too slow too you know few times per second you're not going to perceive anything based upon your core vibrational state okay then so if you know that another level up from atoms, there are parts and components of the sun that are there and not there and there and not there. Well, what would happen is this. You see, when light is emitted from that reaction, it is slowed down right away through a certain amount of resistance of the dark energy so light is emitted at a certain speed just imagine spitting okay slow it down in your mind like that okay you get a stream of photons going that's because you have individual photons because of the frequency of emittance of them but then the very existence based upon that is there and not and there and not also so what's really going to be occurring is a stream of photons and resistance slowing them down slightly and then another one because then the sun think of it real basically say the sun disappears so now there is no emittance of light but then it comes back and emits it again so now there's a gap in between except the new emittance is at original speed which will be faster than the the first emittance and this is very a very basic way to look at it. It's more complex than that, but not much more complex than this. But I want to keep it simple. So like uh, a cue ball in a pool game, you're colliding 
the photons. And so picture in your mind this new stream coming faster and then the the you know the photons and the in this the lead photons collide with the rear photons in the first emittance and what happens like pool balls in billiards they collide off of each other and one goes back or is slowed down it depends on your point of view and the other is uh, pushed forward and it just keeps doing that based upon its refreshment uh, the, the refreshing of its existence in different scales so then my question of uh, okay well then polarized glasses I said sure the ones that collide outside that um, plane don't make it through. They get uh, you know cut off a little bit. Not completely. They'll make it through the other lines, but it will be not in a frequency you can detect because of it, it alters its you know stream. So imagine a 360 plane where they have you know the potential of colliding in this plane, that plane, that plane, and the polarized glasses uh, choose what plane it would exist in. So I said, well, okay, then what, what are colors then? I looked at a, uh, the lawn, it was green. I said, well, what's occurring then? And it corrected a few things for me. Okay, you look at that green lawn, that green leaf. You think it's absorbing all of the light except green. I said, yeah, that's what we're told in science. I didn't say it, you know, that's what we're told. No, that's not what's occurring at all. It appears that way, but that's not what it is. And I won't get too complex here, but when the light hits the leaf in the female energy, or any color, let's say, and it interacts with the energy of it, and it's absorbed and then emitted, well, same deal. Of, of emittance, but what you're looking at is the frequency of existence of whatever the color is. So the reason the leaf is green is not because it's absorbing everything but green. No, it is reflecting all of the light, but it's reflecting it based upon its frequency of existence. And it started to make sense to me. So it's, you know, um, say you you have a giant um, a giant tennis racket, and uh, you spurt a constant amount of balls. Like say the tennis racket has a thirty foot diameter. Okay, that, that's how big the 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 head of the racket is. And you have a you know every given second you've got a thousand balls coming at it. And it's a constant stream of, of these balls, say. So they're just constantly coming. But the racket has to go back and then forth and back and forth. And as the balls are hitting the racket, when it's moving back, they're not going to be rebounded the same way as they are as the racket is moving forward to the constant stream. You can sit in the uh, swimming pool and uh, the water's just there, and you can make a splash, but the splash is dependent upon your hand moving forward and hitting the water. Same thing with light. Same thing with reflection of light. It's the existence. It's there to reflect it, and then it's not. And then it's there, and then it's not. So the, the question then that occurred to my mind, well, why would a darker color get warmer in the sun than a lighter color. What occurred in my mind through this interaction was the idea that, okay, well remember, you are in a bandwidth of existence. Every color that you perceive is a vibration that you are perceiving. If it can reflect light, or more specifically, be seen by you, it's in your bandwidth and therefore in the bandwidth of interaction of light. But there's other wavelengths of light energy or electromagnetic energy that could heat something up, of course, you already know that. If a part of what it's heating up is within the bandwidth of excitability or able to make an interference pattern reaction.
you just have to really slow it down in your mind and uh, say dark uh, a black color in the sun its vibration is slower sometimes why do I say sometimes because see what you perceive is black uh, once you get below the frequency of excitability to your rods and cones anything slower than that will be perceived as black to you but it doesn't mean it's at the same frequency there can be many things perceived as exactly black all that means is it's not it's no longer stimulating your eyes uh, white would be the most intense stimulation but what if something was vibrating uh, so fast that it uh, could not be perceived by your eyes it'd be black again or in that case transparent but I mean, you've got to understand uh, when you when you look at the sky at night and you see the stars sure but what about everything in between the stars you perceive it as black right but it's not black it's not absorbing light or or emitting the color black it's just lack of stimulation that's why you perceive it is black if it's vibrating slower though in this realm if you have something that's at a slow vibration and that's why it's black or very dark it's like hot potato okay I'm gonna hand you a potato and it's burning okay and you want to get rid of it as soon as possible to not absorb the heat and cause a burn the faster you get rid of it the less it's going to hurt your hand right the longer you hold on to it before you throw it the more heat you absorb into your body that's what it comes down to with the really dark colors absorbing heat and you can mix and match vibration if something's vibrating faster and you want to absorb heat what do you have to do these are questions you need to think about I really want you to start considering what I'm saying don't memorize it think about it how does a microwave work then it's a higher speed why because it's hitting you uh, it's bombarding you more and so you can't reflect it you can't you, you're forced to absorb it based upon your vibration it would be the same thing uh, okay if, if you want a wavelength directed at you that would burn you well if you lowered your vibration you could lower that wavelength or that frequency in a correlatable way to you to have the same effect on you if you lower your frequency to a certain amount uh, you could lower the frequency that uh, is being directed at you to have the same effect as long as it's uh, proportional to how much you've lowered your frequency the only reasons microwaves tend to heat things up here is just the things that you're perceiving if something's vibrating faster it's not going to heat it up as much based upon that I mean, I haven't looked it up yet, but I'll here, I'll put myself out there. I can predict, based upon my knowledge of reality, that cold water will heat faster than warm or hot water. Or, in other words, it will absorb heat faster, proportional to its own vibration, its own vibratory state. Anyway, so you understand that. Then the idea of, okay, well, how do they use colors against you then? my connection to this intuition which is connected to life itself gave me the answer uh, so you're looking at the color green right well what you're seeing is the rate of reflection of light its heat will be dependent upon that rate like hot potato what happens if you go into a room and shine a red light everything looks red right away right and everything in the room is a variable color you frequency lock onto the red itself therefore everything looks red because that's a constant that's what you're locked onto that's what you're distracted by however the longer you're in that red light you start to segregate out the other colors blue starts to look blue again yellow starts to look yellow again why it's still reflecting red light at you you saw it initially but now you're segregating out and looking at the other components you're still seeing red light but it's taking that red light and emitting it in pulses of its own frequency it's kind of like um, driving down the highway you could be in the car 
and uh, you could be throwing a ball in your lap up and catching it. You know, one ball, throw it up, throw it down. No resistance of wind. The ball appears to be just going up and down to you. If you go outside of the car and look at the car moving, you see that the car is going, say, 70 miles per hour. The ball, then, would not be going up and down. It's actually making an arch over, you know, the speed it's going, 70 miles per hour, from the moment it goes up from your hand and comes back down. But then if you go uh, off from that, you see the Earth is spinning, and it's actually not going in a straight line arch, but it's spinning. And then if you go back from that, the Earth is going around the sun, blah, blah, blah. This would be the segregation of detail. This is the very fundamental concept of a carrier wave. If you listen, and I've said this before, if you listen to a radio station, and say it's 100 megahertz, you're not listening to 100 megahertz, a 100 megahertz sine wave. You couldn't even interpret that with your ears, but say you could. You, 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 that's not what you're hearing, that's the carrier wave. And embedded upon that is the audiogram of the music. Well, when you're sitting in a room where you're shining a red light bulb, when you start to notice all the other colors again, if you put on those amber vision, you know, it's a different thing, but if you put on uh, you know, yellow tinted sunglasses, after a while you start to see color again. Okay, so if you're looking at a blue color with red light coming off of it and you start to perceive it as blue, what's happening there? Blue is now the carrier wave for red light. It's red light in its own pulse, but it's being like the tennis racket, you know, it, it's being emitted at the frequency of, of existence uh, as the color of blue. Blue is the carrier wave. So now you can start to understand something, because you, you've seen this your whole life, but you, you haven't been putting it together, right? The information has been available to you, but you haven't connected to you. So you just have ignored it, right? We all have. But the people running the planet have not. So you can start to imagine now the usage of color. If you understand this very basic principle, that if I shine a blue light onto a red object, at first it appears to be blue. Because you're getting both. It's what your brain is decoding. So with television, if they get you focused on the moving images, the macro picture, that which is embedded upon the light emitted at you, is a secondary source of information. But they've got you looking at all the distracting things on TV, so your brain is not decoding the stuff embedded upon the light coming off the TV. You're looking at the picture. This is identical to what's going on when you shine a blue light onto a red object and you see the object is red. They alter your brain waves with television through frequency so that you don't decode as readily or notice that as readily because you're too distracted. All the manipulation, uh, is, a lot of it's based upon this principle, what you can see, what you can't see, what can be hidden from you. And now you start to understand that if you don't have this knowledge, then if somebody tells you that the television is programming your mind, you laugh at that. And it's very basic, isn't it? You understand it now, don't you? I mean, to some degree, you feel like you understand it. Yeah, it's really not hard to understand, and, and that's where I want you to really pay attention. Pay attention to what is happening to your confidence level. What do I mean by that? You didn't know this before I told you, right? But you know it now. How long did it take you to have this open up in your mind? Are you a stupid person? Well... Do you or do you not have a better understanding in how short of a time has this been out of your whole life? Are you stupid? Or did someone just not explain it correctly to you? You're not stupid. If you understand the concept of what I'm saying, you don't need to memorize it. I'm not going to give you a test tomorrow on this. What I want you to do is understand it as I'm saying it. If you can do that, then you have to make yourself aware right now that you can learn. Think about it. 
If you understand it, I didn't make that happen. All I did was tell you. Whether you understand it or not is up to you. It's up to your capabilities. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying to you? So if you don't tell somebody the correct information to allow them to observe their own brain working throughout their entire life or have it work in irrelevant, useless data sets, school, you disable that person. Do you have a better understanding of how color affects you? Well, color is a frequency, right? Okay. Well, you are a frequency. Your brainwave state is a frequency. If I stimulate you with a color and it has a certain frequency, it's going to react with your body because you can see it. That means you are in the same bandwidth of existence. Anything you can perceive is within your bandwidth. Therefore, its vibration can affect you. That makes sense, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to interfere with it. You wouldn't be able to interact with it. Well, meaning, uh, so you can hear on average from 20 hertz to 16,000 hertz. So you can interact with any sound vibration between those two points. Anything within there, it's fair game. Your ears can sense it. Right? Okay. It exists, you exist on that level. So if I stimulate you with a color that you can perceive, that means it's a, in a vibratory rate that your body can exist in, including your brain. So if yellow, uh, now you understand yellow is a frequency of existence emitting light, reflecting it when it's there to reflect it, no matter how many times per second that is, or frequency. Then your eyes are hit with pulses. Those pulses go through your your optic nerve, through your brain stem, and then constantly streaming into your brain. Your brain is electromagnetic. Every time a neuron depolarizes, it e emits electromagnetism. You have this balance shifting of in the brain. It would be, you know, uh, potassium, sodium chloride. As they switch in and out, it creates this, this change in electronegativity which is an electromagnetic wavelength. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But that can affect nearby neurons and nearby nerves. Okay? And they call that entrainment, brainwave entrainment. <clears throat> so if you get a constant frequency coming into your eyes, it's going through your brain. Okay? The more, the higher the amplitude, the quicker it happens, but that will start to make your brain oscillate on that frequency. Why? Because you're experiencing it, your brain will adjust to it. However, what if someone can find the certain frequencies for different emotional states? Not hard at all. And then find the color that correlates to that emotional state. If you, it's, uh, you know, a two-ended stick. If, if you stimulate somebody with the vibration of, say, anger, then you can make them start to feel angry. If you've had thoughts that have made you angry, they're linked to a vibration. If you have those thoughts, you create the vibration. However, if you infuse the vibration, you can bring those thoughts to surface. Do you see? This is how you can get a, a country riled up to go murder children in Iraq. You can, because they're bound to emotion and to structure. You can do it with sound, sight, TV uses both. And then embedded upon that are the, you know, as a carrier wave are the things you're not perceiving at all that are also in training your brain as a secondary wave or tertiary or quaternary. And don't be intimidated by it. Understand it. Now are you starting to get a little bit better of an understanding of what I'm talking about? It's not that hard, but just remember one thing. You understand it. What does that tell you? Now, a five-year-old could understand these things if you raise the five-year-old correctly. Don't give it the vaccinations, you know, and all the other things designed to keep the brain from accessing this information, which is available to you. Uh, the Creator, it created everything. 
it's not about whether it can teach you it's only about what you can handle in the moment that it wants to share it with you it's just that your preconceived core beliefs are so wrong that when you when people try to connect to the creator and they're hanging on to those beliefs and they want to be taught from within those beliefs like teach me why this belief I have is right or wrong why is this uh, correct or incorrect when you're so far off base that there isn't enough information in your brain to put together that it just has to be knowledge and then you have to go out and try to extract a metaphor from life that's how you interact with the creator it's the consciousness the love that will take what you have and put it together correctly when you're in connection with it and if it doesn't then it will put the information in your soul which will communicate with your mind and you start to extract the metaphor because truth is only in metaphor in a scalar reality when I say you need to know these things um, that means you you cannot be trying to memorize what I'm saying um, I know there are people that know this there are scientists that probably know this I mean it's not very hard at all I mean the nature of light sun wavelengths uh, the nature of scalar reality is so very basic that the concept that they don't know it um, would blow my mind I mean this is this is uh, to me what I'm telling you right now would be what I would want to start explaining to say a kindergartner this is kindergarten level stuff for a human it should be and that's not to offend you it's just my take on it it's it's so very basic what, what am I saying to you if you try to memorize what I'm saying you, you, you'll you'll no offense but you'll screw it up people have already done that of they're not connected to their intuition to the creator they I've given a lot of um, you know input so far and other uploads uh, one is my cancer analogy which I'm going to get into for the first time now and people they don't get it they they hear what I say they remember what affected them and then I hear them try to copy and plagiarize what I say to influence people but they screw it up why because they don't have that connection they don't understand what I'm saying I mean I I know a person right now that will change but right now he's on a cancerous energy he's got anger and fear in him and uh, I heard him using my cancer analogy to pull people into his point of view of fear and anger and war. And I'm like, what? 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 Don't be using my analogy. What am I saying to you? Have you? Have you? F Do you know yet? I I don't want to give you a fish every time you listen to me. I want to teach you how to fish and I'm telling you there's only one way to do it there's only one way if you try to verify what I'm saying through some sort of information in this realm you're insane if you try to critically assess what I'm saying when you don't have the ability to come up with it on your own if you do that you're insane this is the very problem with humans right now you're all insane and because you're all insane and yeah okay so what does that mean maybe three percent of them are not okay but that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about the the majority here the majority of humans are insane and because you're all insane you don't know it no psychiatrist can help you psychiatrists are insane even more otherwise they wouldn't have gone into psychiatry 
Why have I counseled psychiatrists? Why have they sought, sought out my counsel? And then they try to critically assess what I'm saying compared to the textbooks and journals and, and other research by the insane on the mind. Why is he right? Fascinated by me rather than just becoming what they are? It's insane. What I'm telling you is your sanity is there uh, with this hand being... Imagine this hand over your head reaching down, waiting for you to grab it. And you're looking everywhere but at that hand. You, you, you're insane. And there... <laughs> I could talk for weeks straight on things you've never even thought of. And I would get the reaction of all of the computers. When I talk to people, I feel like, uh, not that I'm into movies, I see the poison in all of them, but that's what you you people go by. So, I mean, I mean that's what you know. Uh, there's the movies, the, the Matrix, and in the second one, Neo goes to the source, and every time he has a thought, you see all of the different, you know, when there's a, an exchange that happens, all his possible reactions show up on a screen behind him. This is how I feel when I talk to somebody. The intuition, I, I, I can predict all of you, everybody, all the different reactions to me and what I'm saying. And it's painfully lonely. It is. It's lonely. It's, um, there are people trying to assess what I'm saying try to figure out whether it's right or wrong, provable, verifiable. People that think I am insane because they've read the word insane, maybe seen the words delusional, read their psychiatric uh, textbook or the Merck manual or something, some sort of diagnostic manual that they've tried to copy and paste into their mind and then regurgitate onto the world in the form of projection. They don't have an understanding of it. Had they never been told about it, they never would have figured that out. They had to go to some sort of school for it. They had to be told about it by a professor, a teacher, a textbook, a lecture. Most people that go into psychology are so screwed up that it's some sort of cry for help, some sort of defense mechanism for control and they don't learn anything, they just memorize what they're told to the best of their ability and then feel that they're aware and they're just more bound to structure. It's uh, the people that critically assess are plagiarizing. Most of the personalities on this planet are plagiarism in animation. I mean, it, it, it is plagiarism. They're, look how many pe people copy each other in this planet. I mean, especially in the United States. Look at hip-hop. Look at that community. Where's the uniqueness in that? Everybody talks the same, dresses the same, acts the same, thinks the same thing. And that's why that was allowed on TV and the creative black people were not. And then you get subliminal messages telling you that you you know, no matter how bizarre it seems, no matter how robotic and angry and detached it's becoming, you can't say anything about it. What you need to understand right now is the basics. If you try to assess me, fine, that's great, but you need to ask yourself, where are you getting the very questions you ask? What are you, what triggered your assessment? Other than opposition. You feel you either need to believe me or disbelieve me. Agree with me or disagree with me. Well, what are you basing your agreement or disagreement on? Something you have the ability to come up with in your own mind? Or was it something that you read somewhere and you liked the personality, the vocabulary, the presentation? The person had a good resume. 
and you saw enough of the same information to build what you th what you think is a knowledge base of which you are pulling from to compare and contrast to everything else you're told, none of which is yours. It's uh, computer data. You know, there's one scene in, in one movie that really touched me when I saw it for the first time because I felt like it was the first moment in my life where I felt like I wasn't alone. And that was the scene in Goodwill Hunting when they were in that Harvard bar and you had the guy come up and <laughs> make fun of Will's friend, Ben Affleck. And Will came out and proved that he was a robot. I had never seen anything like that in my experience. And I didn't watch a lot of movies. I, didn't, I never saw anybody who got it like that so perfectly. Memorizing is, means nothing. Some of you are, are listening to me and you're feeling insulted by me. The brain has actually gotten that diseased on planet Earth that people, when they're told what is occurring within them that they need to know so that they can repair themselves, rather than recognizing that, they become insulted and then formulate a defense in their mind. Uh, these are the people that argue. Um, and you, most people are this way. You, you start to argue and they don't listen anymore. They're thinking up, while you're speaking, they're thinking up of a, a, some sort of defense to their, for their ego against you. I mean, the insanity on this planet is in, uh, it's insane. It's, it's just, uh, it's, it's a real problem. It's a disease. And you have people that, I mean, people more or less wait for each other to finish speaking. They, they, it's, it's so, insane is not the right word. Um, unalive, computerized. You, you ask if they've ever invented artificial intelligence? Yes, the majority of human beings on this planet are artificially intelligent. It's just the way it is. I didn't do it. I was born here um, to witness this. And have I witnessed it? Yeah. There's so much I know about what's going on right now that I can't begin to tell you yet because telling you would be insane. It's just the way it is. Until you... <laughs> see, what you don't understand, the average animal um, knows so much more than you do. It doesn't matter if their brain can retain the information, like how big is their hard drive. As long as they're connected to the creator, they'll know what they need to know in any given moment. They may or may not retain it, kind of like... Uh, you know, some have experienced something similar, though this is not it, and I specify this. Smoking marijuana, you lose your memory, but you have all this creativity, right, during it. But that's not, all you're doing is changing your frequency. You actually disconnect yourself from intuition when you smoke marijuana, hence paranoia. Paranoia is a disconnection from intuition, intuitive knowing. I mean, shouldn't you, you should ask yourself... With all the fear mongering, all the potential threats and possible things that, that can happen to you, right, in the world, in what I'm doing, shouldn't I be the most paranoid guy you've ever heard in your life? Shouldn't I be cowering in a corner somewhere? I don't suffer from paranoia. I've seen things that would destroy the average person mentally um, if they're disconnected from intuition just you know they'd be loony um, within days they're gone why have I seen it because my job is to do a few certain things I am not patronizing you you just don't understand if I told you the reality right now and I will tell you but if I told it to you right now you, um, I would be hurting you. That's why when you get people like, uh, you know, that, that, that pretend that they are uh, helping you, 
uh, really when their goal is to hurt you or they're being controlled and don't know it to hurt you like Fritz Springmeier see all I needed to see with Fritz Springmeier was after one of his lectures when a woman came up to talk to him how he blew her off that was all I needed to see his fake uh, fake way of, of dealing with her you know that I knew right away there's no question in my mind. I mean, if you read Fritz Springmeier's books, they're overwhelming you with fear. Some of the details are correct, yeah. But he's not enabling you. Oh, and just make sure you believe in God. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, that we, oh, yeah, just believe in God. No, 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 no. You don't tell someone to believe in God. You can't believe in God. And, he, and it isn't a procedure like, okay... Um, I choose to, to believe in God and connect to God. God, where are you? It, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> uh, that doesn't work. Sorry, it doesn't work. Uh, there's, there's only one way to connect to the Creator. And so this is what I need to do first, or everything else will be done in vain, frustration, ignorance, uh and just stupidity if I tell you the situation that you're in without enabling you first because if you're enabled it will hardly even bother you you see how, how does a butterfly make it from South America to Canada when it makes that trip how big is a butterfly's brain do you believe that it somehow stores the information in the form of memory and recall? No. That is what abundance means. It's connected to all of the energies involved with its creation. Therefore, it knows what it needs to do at any given time. That is abundance. I watch my cat, and my cat, though cats can become paranoid, is still way less paranoid than the average human. How do I know that? He can be still. You see, why is it you're all trying to keep yourselves busy? Why do they even call businesses businesses? Busyness? Busy as a bee? You, you think this beehive mentality is coming? No, you're already in the beehive. You're already being controlled by one giant consciousness. You're already bees. Look how you, uh, everything you're set up to do, to pursue this goal, to do this, to do that. You can't stand to sit there uh, without turning the TV on to occupy your mind, to help yourself move through time. Insanity is a disconnection from all of the energies, mainly love, that is responsible for your very existence. You're, of course, lied to here, and you're told love is, you know, a relationship or an emotion. Um, you can't define love, you know, just oh, one lie after another. Love is uh, a combination of everything the Creator intends, which is all there is, its own self, its own intention, and therefore everything that it creates. In one way, love is an intelligence. So far in advance of the mind that not even the speeds of your subconscious mind could observe the information. That would be like giving you a notebook and a pen and sitting you down next to a highway and saying, okay, I want you to write down the license plate number for every car that drives past. Except I'm going to have them drive past at 500 million miles per hour and only have 10 feet in between each car. Yeah, good luck with that. But see, your soul energy, your spirit energy, can receive that information because that's one and the same. The scalar, you know, the scalar relationship can see itself as I below, above, all, everything. So it can interpret that, and then that 
interacts with your mind, the way the creator will work with you is kind of like teamwork where, you know, you if you're throwing sandbags uh, in preparation for a hurricane, you hand it to one person and hands it to the other person and hands it to the other person, that type of thing. That type of interaction right now in this existence is kind of how that works. In love is so advanced that people you know, that type of instantaneous knowing, uh, it's kind of like, again, I have to use a movie to give you a visual idea, but um, in the first Matrix, when they hook Neo up to his combat training, and says, get ready, and then just downloads it into his head, and he's like, whoa, I know Kung Fu, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, that that's kind of what love is, but even faster than that. You just know. Your mind has the option to store it, if you wish. But it's unnecessary, I mean, for all life forms. I mean, it's, uh, as a life form of the human type, you have a larger brain tissue mass to store and mix things up and whatnot. But your information didn't come from the brain or the brain's observance. You think it did, but it didn't. It, it's such a fast interaction with you that you have an emotional response to it. I mean, it, it it's your emotional responses to love can be varied. If you're down in the dumps and you realize the love for you, you could start crying. That's happened to me, certainly, in the past few months. But that doesn't mean love makes you cry. Um, crying would be a release of blockage of, of knowledge, just laughter as well. I mean, all of these things. If you're with somebody that you love and everything's going well and you feel the love, then it could be a blissful feeling. Love is what created the mind. Therefore, love cannot serve the mind which is, you know, what the people who are the, the consciousness that's running this planet knows. So that's why you're taught that, that you have to pursue love. Make love work for you. That's impossible. So you won't access love. You'll access replacements that they tell you is love. Magnetic attraction. Addiction to being in a relationship. Why are breakups so hard for you all? because you're addicted to the person's presence there you know you you have entrainment of vibration spend enough time with a person you start to get on the same frequency and then an exchange of energy it's an addiction just like an addiction to anything else you need them to verify your own existence and vice versa none of that is love romance it's magnetic attraction uh, coupling of energies that are so detached that they feel that desperate need uh, for it. Someone who really wants love seeks to express love. Because you already got it. If, if you're connected to love, you've got love. You don't need a person to come by and love you. If it happens, great. But if, if you don't It'll only happen. You see, you can't emit love without getting love. And if the only place you're going to get love is from love, the Creator. That's what y'all don't get. I mean, that that is your answer. You see, love is like the solvent to polarity. The mind is insane. It's always in conflict with itself. I can give uh, analogies all day for that. Um, people don't understand how I can, you know, how I can go up to wild animals and um, coexist with them. I'll go into the forest and be a group of deer and my presence is acknowledged. I can go lie down next to them. Not to, you know, impose upon them. I don't go up and try to pet them. I don't do those stupid human things. I, you know, I'm aware and they know it. See, they don't need to assess it. They don't need to go read a book about humans to know what they're dealing with. 
Why do you think most animals bolt when you come by? Because they see you are detached. They see that you are insane. They don't need to know your name, your history, uh, what you think your intentions are. They see it as a disease, as something that scares them. You, you, um... See, most people walk up to an animal and they they have this hope. Oh, come here, I won't hurt you. Come on. <laughs> they have this hope that the animal will come, so they're trying to pursue that hope. But the hope in a binary, polarized mind would have to be offset by a belief that it will not come. Otherwise, what are you hoping for? And that duality, that insanity is being broadcast at the animal simultaneously and uh, if your you know your belief of that it won't come is going to be more solid because the hope is transient it's in that situation that's being created from a belief that was in your mind before you saw the animal or came into its contact uh, with it it's uh you know rather you know, I can't tell you how to do it there is no procedure to know what I mean when I say you go up to an animal and you're not broadcasting a hope that it will come to you or a belief that it will not. But seeing it as an equal creation and being able to communicate with it. The, the animals accept my presence. They acknowledge it and I understand them. It's funny how deer will go through a certain little ritual to... It's cute. You know, they communicate with me. And I understand what they're meaning, what they're saying. A biologist would take notes and say, well, when it does this with its head and does this and this, it means that, the insanity of it. <laughs> uh, deer can mean different things doing the same thing. Uh, you, you, <laughs> either you're connected to the Creator or you're not. It's, it's like people that, that complain that they can't find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. They want one so bad, they hope they're going to meet somebody, so of course, they have a belief that they will not. Otherwise, what are they hoping for? So they'll buy a certain type of perfume, or maybe go shopping to get better outfits. So all these procedures to build that are built upon the hope. Maybe they'll run into somebody that's magnetically opposite to them in their charge and never works out, right? forcing it that way. But then you'll hear people say, well, gosh, you know what, though? I met the perfect person when I least expected it. I was busy. I was doing something else. I, I wasn't thinking about it. And bang! There they were. Welcome to life. Now, why did that happen? You weren't acting upon a hope that you'll meet somebody. Therefore, the belief that you will not was not active and resonating. Um, you allowed it to happen. This is the, the, the truth of your existence. There is another example of abundance. You think with the brain that you will learn something from aliens. What is an alien in an infinite uh, consciousness? <laughs> consciousness system? What, 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 what is that? Alien? <laughs> are there beings that are controlling you and running this planet that are not the same as you, that are not human? Yes, of course there are. But you've got to understand that they are disconnected as well. So it doesn't matter if their IQ is 1,500, or if they have equivalent of five of your brains and can have 40 conversations at once. It's still memory, recall, processing, storage, and insane. It doesn't even matter if most of what they have retained appears to be correct. They will never, ever be as intuitive as a butterfly. Any person connected to intuition, to what they are, 
will always make quicker and better decisions than any demon, any alien, anything disconnected from the Creator. Always. I've had people ask me, so what about this mind control? Are you saying that they, they can interface with your brain and put images in your brain and thoughts and all kinds of stuff? How do you handle that? Well, imagine if they wanted to, to mind control a butterfly with the same type of images and thought implants. And of course, don't memorize butterfly. It can be anything that's connected to creation. Say they want to mind control a finch or a robin bird, okay? Well, they couldn't do it the same way. Why? They don't have the brain size to process it and store the information used to program them. But wait a minute. They're able to make incredible decisions, it appears, <laughs> irrelevant of what they have stored. See, when you're connected to intuition, even if you forget what you've learned, it's always available to you. You can take an Alzheimer's uh, patient, connect them to love and intuition. They may have forgotten what they did last year, but they won't forget that the stove is on. They won't forget certain things they need to know. Why? Is it coming from the brain? No. But why am I telling you this? If they couldn't control or mind control a bird with the same type of things they use on humans, then what are they depending upon? Very basically, what are they depending upon? The cerebral cortex, your computer. When you connect to intuition, thought implants is, is corrected in real time. You See, if you try to memorize how they control your mind and, you know, all the different techniques and I'd try to strategize against it from within the mind that they're controlling, forget about it. You're cooked. If you allow love and intuition to command your mind, it doesn't matter what they put into it. It knows. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Um, what have I witnessed in the last year? Well, let's see. I've had human being agents uh, turn on a microphone, hearing background noise in a room, speaking to me occasionally. I've seen them put in visual subliminal messages uh, right into my brain. Uh, I understand the technology. There's no point in telling you right now, but that is also very, very basic. Otherwise, an EEG wouldn't work. <laughs> I have had them put things that look like PowerPoints in my head. Uh, one, I remember, uh, I, I, was, I woke up from sleeping and I opened my eyes, which I knew right away. See, intuition was letting me know when it happened, why it happened. Uh, it, it triggered my brain into beta, which that triggered the program. Once the brain goes into beta, that means he's awake, and then he won't notice it. His eyes will be open, because it's very faint. Intuition had me shut my eyes real quick, and uh, there's this you know, gray square with rounded corners, and it has a title that says, Preconceived Core of Beliefs. I've never heard the term before, nothing, okay? This is what was in, and it had like three questions underneath it. And then it showed... If you've seen the movie The Ring, you know that video they all watch in The Ring was just a series of strange scenes and bizarre images and such. It was like that for four minutes straight. I'm just watching it. They've tried to intimidate me by putting really bizarre thoughts on my head, scary thoughts. Uh, they can simulate my voice. They've put my own voice in my head. Easy. They've sampled my speech patterns, my resonance, my style, and have radiated my voice back at me. I caught it because of intuition, said, catch this. I was thinking about something else, and I said, do you notice there's another thing going on right now? Listen. 
saying the most perverted things and they put perverted images in my head, scary images in my head, everything. You can imagine. I have had what some of you would call aliens uh, try to control my mind, a consciousness. Some of you would call demons that uh, have tried to psychically attack me and control my mind. I uh, was witnessing what you would call paranormal stuff, things moving on their own. I've been hit with what are like energy balls that, that feel like it's going to knock your spirit right out of the body. I've had my bed shaken violently. Uh, all kinds of things. So, see, when I say, so big deal, the insane mind says, what do you mean big deal? What do you mean, so? <laughs> Again, does a butterfly memorize its vector of travel, all the things it needs to know to make the trip from South America to Canada? When have they controlled my mind successfully? I started to be shown this. When you are disconnected from love. When you are not, you're like Neo watching the, the code go by. No alien, no matter how intelligent they appear, no matter what technology they have, if, if they're disconnected from love, they cannot compare to me. And they know it. They try to assess it. How is he resisting? Let's try this. Let's try that. They mix it up. They keep strategizing. They can't touch my, what they perceive as intellect. Just the way it is. No mind control can control. <laughs> mind control is structure. It originates from a mind, a result of creation. Therefore, trying to affect a mind, a result of creation. <laughs> if you, you don't get it yet, if you connect to the creator, not religion, if you connect to that which cre created you, uh, yeah, it controls your mind better than anything it created can. No problem. It's not even a question. It's not even, um, y you don't quite appreciate what I'm saying to you. My, the mind is structure. It's a binary apparatus. It's a computer. It's binary. It's polarized. On, off. Yes, no. And you're thinking, well, my thoughts are not yes or no. I'm neutral about things. Well, no, no, no. Even your neutrality can be broken up into components that are yes or no. They're trying to digitize people. That's what they've done. That's where digital has come out. That's why they... You know, everything is digital. It's, it's their very nature. Why, do you, why else would digital occur? If people, the, the consciousness that's controlling all of you is suffering from a very huge bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is being stuck in the mind with no love. See, I don't care who you are. If you're connected to the Creator, you cannot be insane in any given moment. I use this example see people just don't understand when I say uh, sometimes I've said love commands the mind but people don't understand that they, they they link the word command with control and that isn't it love allows the mind to be what it was supposed to be a tool used by love the mind is structure which is a result of interference patterns of energy which is structure Shut your eyes and think of a flower right now. Imagine a flower in your mind. Imagine a a daisy. Do you see it? Where is it? 
Tell me, where is it? Where is that daisy? Imagine a garden now. Where is that garden? What is that garden? You can see it, can't you? What is that? Now let's be more specific. Why is that? You know what you're seeing. Why are you seeing it? Where is it? What is its dimensions? Is that all of your mind? Or a result of the mind, which is holographic? Those are interference patterns. Reverse engineered. It's so like in a chemistry formula, they don't have really equal signs. They have arrows that go both ways. If it's a back and forth thing, same thing. You've observed the garden, which is just really the detection of waveforms of energy, mapped it in your mind, stored away that as waveforms, and now you're reproducing those waveforms to see the image. Um, Holograms, if, you, if you've taken a physics class, even in high school, you usually have a unit where you make yourself a hologram. You use a laser and you split the light beam so you hit it from different angles. But when you look at that, you know, when your teacher will tell you, okay, let's look at the film, and you see that it's just concentric rings that interfere with each other, like waves, on a, and David Icke even talks about this. They're, they're interfering with each other. Well, you're not seeing a picture when you, when you look at that. It's only when you shine the light on it, the laser, in a correct way that your brain interprets it as an image. You just did the same thing by viewing the garden in your mind. It's structure. It's the result of creation. Love is the intention of God. God, there is only one God, and you are part of that God. You are the garden in God's mind. So, you as being part of the garden, can you get cancer? Well, see, God doesn't uh, visualize you. Um, it doesn't make you a fixed image. It loves so much and has so much ability that it wants you to be self-aware, to observe it, enjoy it, assist it. Do you like to dream? You ever have a really good dream? Everybody in that dream was you. Everything in that dream was you. God's a dreamer. Except when it creates self-aware components, somehow what happened is part of it got disconnected from it. A self-aware creation of God, which is a part of God, that got disconnected from the Creator. God is the wrong word. And along with that comes fear, and then the predictable. I mean, the structure is so predictable. It's not to insult it. I'm not insulting the cancerous energy that's controlling everything right now. But it's so obvious that you, of course, would get scared, and then try to you know control everything and then you can become addicted addiction comes from disconnection from the creator what you call the Illuminati and the energy they're serving um, is incredibly addicted to what it's doing and I won't get into it right now but obvious results the mind is structure so therefore math is structure mathematics geometry numerology it's the result of creation now you have a disconnected part of that creation that tries to assess everything by looking at all of the results of the creation and not the creator so it's a bunch of copying reconfiguring trying to use structure against structure math is not life you've got to understand they're obsessed with numerology Zodiac, astrology, uh, witchcraft, the whole thing is bound by structure. The pyramid, the, the, the energy grids on the planet, they look and say, okay, it appears here, and structurally we can say, why? Because they're refusing, they're, they're scared to death of this energy saying, you were part of me. And it's d building up a wall of defense, or has, against it. How does... 
love then take command over structure well you've got to be connected to it and if you're disconnected from it and don't seek it with its hand always extended out to you even this cancerous energy has a giant hand saying just grab it man just grab it then you'll say I don't believe in God what if one of your skin cells uh, said uh, you know if one of my skin cells said I don't believe John exists if you exist John show me yourself well I can't because it makes me up I can't shrink myself down without shrinking it down it can't perceive me um, in my full form from the outside to see me as a being if it's within my being I can love it send it nutrients carbohydrates proteins electrolytes minerals oxygen but when it's healthy it just knows that cancer is is induced by trauma and that can come in various ways could be a virus could be UV damage to a cell what happens there the DNA gets so beat up base pairs are removed it has different repair mechanisms sometimes it's able to replace base pairs that have been lost sometimes it's so screwed up it undergoes what's called gross repair it just starts putting them together at random normally the cell dies but sometimes it creates what's called an oncogene or this is how they assess it molecularly like computers geneticists don't get it uh, if you take an advanced genetic course in university you see that everything is explained to you either in math or structure you take chemistry and it's all structure electronegativity the creator put in my mind the, uh, there's an element right away what's missing from the uh, periodic table time but anyway electronegativity is the tendency of an atom or the nucleus of an atom to want to draw electron consciousness around it within a molecule you see that with water oxygen would be considered an electronegative atom and hydrogen's not so when you have two hydrogens hanging off of an oxygen and you have all the electron consciousness bathing it, surrounding it, seeing itself as I, the water molecule. It decides to allocate more electrons, or that consciousness, around the oxygen. Therefore, less electron energy is shielding the hydrogens. So they call it a polarized molecule or polar. Positive charge by the hydrogens and negative or more electron consciousness around the oxygen. Well, okay so it's like magnets or magnetic attraction if you start to get large molecules they can start to have different when you have proteins in your body let's deal with the body you have different levels of structure they, they call them primary secondary tertiary quaternary tertiary would be primary is just the chain secondary is the winding of the chain tertiary would be folding of the chain upon itself to take a shape Quaternary would be different um, molecules coming together and, and being magnetically attracted to each other, like an antibody would be quaternary structure. Okay? Why am I telling you this? Because how does an enzyme then? An enzyme is a protein with a large chain, you know, and chains wrapped around themselves to take a shape. Scientists say, well, there are different uh, atoms in there that are electronegative and they draw a certain amount of electron consciousness around themselves therefore you know making other atoms uh, more positively charged as it appears so any molecule that will come in contact with it will be magnetically attra attracted to the various components of that uh, enzyme beep, 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 boop, 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 boop. <laughs> just a computer thinking that through then you have coenzymes that attach to the enzyme like uh, certain B vitamins that uh, because of its electronegativity draws certain electronegative consciousness or certain electron consciousness around itself therefore shielding less of certain parts of the enzyme so because of that changes certain magnetic relationships and it changes its shape 
And then you have cofactors which attach to the certain coenzymes like magnesium and that draws more, you know, or gives off more electrons to change its shape, turn it on, turn it off, like a computer. DNA uh, multiplies because you have a helicase enzyme that starts to go anywhere within the DNA and open it up like a bubble and unwind it, unzip it, and then polymerase enzyme will attach itself to a certain codon and begin to move down that codon to transcribe RNA, which is then transferred to a ribosome, which reads that through a lateral negative attraction and transcribes an amino acid, which becomes a protein, which becomes a structure. What? Okay, that is, yeah, yeah, that that structure that is occurring, sure. What they're missing is the consciousness involved. What do you think that just happens at random? Meiosis and mitosis are just random acts of accidental attraction due to electronegativity and uh, charge within certain molecules. What? And you actually have professors that think they know something, that teach this. The reason they think they know something is because they're only allowed to know that and ridiculed if they don't, or if they don't follow that, so that they can brainwash other students and keep them from thinking. It's structure. And even the consciousness that runs it is structure. Let me give you a really good example of what I mean. Because, see, I could go on all day about this. Literally, I could, I could have a, you know, 150-hour upload. I could go on about science, properties, reality, whatever. All day, it will do nothing for you. I need to give you metaphors. I need to give you the ability to understand what I'm talking about. So let me try to do that for you. You know, I remember going through the pre-med major was a breeze for me. Did I get all A's? No. Um, sometimes I made the decision to do something else. But when I studied it, um, I enjoyed it, but I had no nobody around who understood it. There was one professor who memorized a lot that I like, and he was a Jewish professor who always felt this need to challenge me. I know why now. But we still get along. Uh, we Just last month we were arguing for like four hours about you know, who runs the world and what's going on, you know. <laughs> back and forth, of course, of the Jewish thing, back and forth. I had intuition, he had structure. We end with a hug, of course, because he knew that I saw through that and saw what was occurring with him on one level. He, when I had him for, he was my physiology professor, but I also took uh, clinical endocrinology with him. And I had other things going on. I missed three weeks of class straight. <laughs> I went into his office. And the exam was the following day. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm fucked, aren't I? You know, not because I didn't think I could do it. I, you know, I just knew that it, the protocol of everything. You know, you need to be here this long in order to learn. This is what I believe. That type of thing. But we sat down and had a heart-to-heart -heart talk about life for about an hour, and I really appreciated that. You know, he took the time to do that. I, I really did appreciate that, and he. I said, okay, well, the exam's tomorrow. Here's what you need to know. And he handed me about three inches thick of, uh, you know, information, notes, handouts, all of that. By then, I knew that I could understand what I was looking at from a different point of view. I said, okay. I took it home and learned it. Didn't memorize it. I learned it, which allowed me to re retain it. <laughs> and I took the exam... And then, of course, he hands it back the following week, and he throws it down on my desk, shaking his head. And there's the grade B+. And then he says, flash recall will get you nowhere. 
And I knew right then he couldn't understand that it was not flash recall. I still, to this day, know most of what was on that exam. I throw it in his face even now. This is one of the things I was arguing with him about. I say, you see, this was like 10 years ago, almost. Yeah, 10 years ago, actually. And you accuse me of flash recall. Compare me to any student you have right now. The understanding of it. What I'm trying to show you, I said to him, is that I understand why things are happening. Love, the intelligence of love. I, I've used this analogy. It was given to me sitting by a river. I had the question, what is love then? The answer was given to me right there on the spot. It explained the concept of male-female energy to me. In my mind, it, it, in my heart, and it just... Uh, how can I explain this to you? I was sitting by a river, and there, you know those certain plants that pop up out of grass that have the male components sticking up, the female leaves and everything? It just points my head down. Look at that leaf. You just know, so you look at it. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, what is it trying to tell me until I realize it infuses into me. Okay, male and female components. Then it will make me observe what's around the structure. Oh, the energy manifesting it. Okay, now I get it. So, male-female energy. Then it moves my head up to the sun. And then I realize, okay, male energy. That's what the sun is. Outward energy. Then it moved it down to my penis. Male energy. Outward energy. Then it moved my head up to not like controlling me like a puppet, it's just the way I'm saying it to you. Two leaves on a tree, well they receive the photon energy, they're female, and the energy around them, female. Receiving. And then the, you know, the parts of the tree that look like an antenna, you know, the broadcast antenna, it's the male part of the tree. And then maybe understand that every, I'm not talking about masculine and feminine, Every party, everybody has so many different male, female energies, in, out energies in your body. Um, then I understood, and then it put in my mind, now you understand what's going on. There's this outward destructive energy occurring on the planet. All the electromagnetic pollution, stimulation, everything is this outward male energy. That's why the Illuminati worship the sun and the phallus, and this male energy. But see, when you're hit with all this electromagnetic energy, it throws your energy system out of balance, which can be female out of balance and male out of balance. And maybe understand that if male is out of balance, uh, outward giving energy becomes aggressive, um, forceful energy. It can be in your actions, striking another individual. Venomous words and language. It's an outward aggressive energy. If female is out, out of balance, then rather than being receiving, you become absorbing, uh, gluttony, shopping excessively, uh, consuming, basically. Uh, people that are around you that feel like they suck your energy away from you, those are that's female energy out of balance. The more out of balance it becomes, the more out of balance male becomes in a person, they become more bipolar or polarized. It made me look at my shoes. I'm like, what am I looking at my shoes for? And then it focuses on the rubber on the bottom of my shoes. The rubber on your shoes, that's an insulator. You're walking around without the ability to discharge or ground yourself to the planet and rid your body of this excess electromagnetic energy which is throwing you out of balance it said take your shoes off so I took my shoes off so now you're discharging put your feet in the water now we're bringing you into balance and then it made me look at the tree and it made me understand this the tree is the same as you it has in and out energy, male, female energy, it's conscious on a different time scale. The tree is one of the most content 
life forms there is because it need not even move. Put the question in my mind, and I say it like that, you think that there's some sort of dialogue going on. Again, it's the only way I can express it to you, but that's not how it is. But that's how I'm going to say it, okay? Just to make it easy to speak to you. If a tree were scared of dying or being killed, would it even grow? You can do anything to a tree and it will keep growing until it loses its capability, but if it were worried about a tornado that could show up at some time, what is the point of growing? It said, if you want to see what you're missing, look to the tree. What does the tree have that you don't have? And then it whipped my head back down, male, female, the sun, leaves all around, trying to coordinate it for me, extracting a metaphor. I didn't have the information available to me that I could look up, so it had to do it this way. And then in my head it came up with certain things. Well, okay, it wasn't inhibited by religion, forced into synthetic guilt, shame, and fear. It wasn't told generically what it's supposed to do, but not explained to it, and then coaxed with subliminal messages and programming and consciousness manipulation to make it do what it's not supposed to do. It's not inhibited with fluoride or NutraSweet. It's not, um, you know, subject to media or mind control. So the tree has an active connection to love and intuition. And it said, love, and this is where I learned this, love processes the mind. It is the solvent to polarity. It, the mind which is this input-output male-female energy and consciousness and structure therefore exists in the tree and in you regardless of difference in form why create everything the same all things being equal though same type of energy system it is connected to me so then the scenario went when you walk into the woods why is it that everybody you know they can be angry afraid worried frustrated, all these different vibrations associated with your thoughts. Your thought will be on the carrier wave of that vibration, one and the same. So, like, uh, you know, if you listen to your favorite radio station, 103.2 megahertz, are you listening to a constant tone of 103.2 megahertz? No, your ear can't even receive that. And even if it was decoded and lowered down, that'd just be a constant sine wave. No, that's the carrier wave. And then embedded secondarily upon that is the audiogram of the music that you hear, the spectrogram and audiogram of the music upon that carrier wave. Well, your thoughts, you can have a thought, I am John, and have that go on different carrier waves, one of lack of self-esteem, one of love, one of answering a question uh, when a professor says, please raise your hand uh, in attendance. The same information can go on different carrier waves. So the emotion is information. It is also a thought in and of itself. And so is the thought. When you walk out into the woods and you feel bad, why does everybody start to feel better? They all know what, but they don't understand why. Well, gee, maybe it's just because it's so serene. No. And it directed me to go start walking in the woods. So take off your shoes. So I took off my shoes, and I started walking in the woods. How do you feel? Feel better. Why? And they just whipped my head. Male, female, male, female, love. Male, female, love. This aura around me, which would be like the electron consciousness around a proton of an atom in a different way, expands now additional energies were drained and any angst any anxiety was being radiated out and of course same bandwidth of existence the trees are in as you otherwise you couldn't perceive them their input output male female energy receives your thought and emotion Yet its animation is guided by this love and this intuition by the Creator itself. 
And so it is that love that processes your feeling. Is it absorbed by the female part like a functioning calculus? What's missing in calculus and not missing in the tree is the love and the creation and the intent. And that love knows everything, so it catches that your emotion is wrong. Not in my world are you to be feeling that way. Let me assess why. As you irradi you're radiating out all the information about what you're feeling, why you're feeling it, everything. It takes it and turns what's incorrect into correct, changing the carrier wave frequency to what it should be, and the information being adjusted, and then the male part of the tree radiates it back to you on your frequency because that's what it came in as, and that information infuses you and alters your perception of what you were worried about and gives you the the true way to view it indirectly just by being around other life forms still connected to love answers can come from trees is it coming from the tree itself or the love that it's connected to that processes your thoughts and it said what's going on in this planet is a disease in its truest form it's a, it's a disconnection and what you're experiencing now is what your body has been disconnected from. Love is the processor and solvent to polarity. It commands the mind. It allows it to work correctly, infusing it with information. All the animals, all the plants, everything there is what you're going to learn from. You are not going to learn from aliens. They are just as disconnected. The ones that are running this planet are disconnected. You cannot learn from them. Stop looking up for uh, UFOs. Stop looking up for new information. And look at what I have allowed to be right in front of you. My creation in its perfect form. They did not think to alter all the other creations. Therefore, your answer is right in front of your face. You are going to pull out of this that you're in by observing my other creations that are not suffering from it. Your answers are in front of your face, and I am guiding you now. And that's how it happened with me. The most advanced scientific knowledge given to me from the creative source. No book, no video, no lecture, no mentor, no professor. Unnecessary. It said if you, in your role, which I didn't believe at that time, because of my ego, there's six and a half billion people. How could this be me? It said, why not? Are you or are you not in connection with this intuition? Have you or have you not noticed that your whole life and wondered what everybody's missing? Do they or do they not want you not to know that? Will they or will they not make sure you keep running into people in life that tell you that you're not that? Am I the only one? No. And then the, the final thought was, they're all supposed to be this way. When you understand you are no more special or worse than anything you're looking at, then you will begin to heal. And that is not something that you can convince yourself of, like some sort of affirmation. I am no better or no worse. I'll force myself to believe that. No, no, no. When you realize the beauty of it, Heaven emerges. Your sensory system expands. You see things you never saw before. It said, it, it, in my mind, it used what I knew, and if I didn't know it, it would show me like that. It would teach me like that. Now, during these lessons is when, you know, I've always had a good relationship with animals. When I lived in Australia, I was feeding wild birds out of my window by my, with my hand. And it reminded me of that. So because then you were loving towards the birds. You didn't have any belief that they wouldn't come or any hope that they would. You knew you loved them. You knew it. You didn't question your own love for them. And because of that, it allowed them to come eat out of your hand and all your roommates said, I don't believe it. 
And as I started to learn that, that's when I started to be able to just walk up to animals and they would start responding to me. Because God is part of all of them. And it's saying, you see, love my other creations. And this is where humans are suffering. And that started teaching me why the animals run. I didn't read some philosophy book. And the computerized people, they respond to me, uh, I've had everybody say, oh, well, that's so-and-so. Oh, you need to talk to a Buddhist, one guy said to me. I do? Why is that? You need to talk to a Hindu. I do? Why is that? I'm talking to the Creator right now. Those people are bound by structure. Why did I always have this feeling of connection to Bruce Lee? Because I understood what he was talking about. You see, there are a lot of people here that are playing a role in the healing of humanity who will begin to be revealed to you. One I can tell you right off the bat, without a doubt, the moment I saw him, within minutes, I knew. He's famous. The only reason I bring it up, I've seen a lot of people that are not. I bring up a famous person so you know who I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with their fame. One person I know that's here on behalf of the Creator is Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. He deals with robots on a daily basis. Uh, people think it's about how to raise your animal. That's what the show is about. No, it's showing humans their disorder. That's what that show is about. Through metaphor. I don't have to guess. I don't need to talk to him. I know. It's just that. It's... <laughs> so love can change your perception, even indirectly. If you have love in you, and someone tries to psychically attack you, those carrier waves, that information, the intent of that is grabbed by love and it says, uh-uh. It's just the way it is. I have all this consciousness around me constantly trying to attack me and they're trying to figure it out structurally. Why is he resisting? Does this mean I'm immortal? No. See, you're all caught in a cycle here. They make you guilty. They infuse in your mind the cancerous intent. And uh, it's sublime. It's a crime that's sublime. It's subliminal in so many ways. And then try to tell you quickly when you die how guilty you are. Use the threat of hell to get you to agree to an alternative, which is contracting to be a victim in your next role to learn your lesson. Do they just do it to you again? And keep working on your soul to break your will until you feel like you're so bad that you can't even perceive that you'd be loved by God so they can absorb you. So, what is going on here and what... <laughs> I don't need to tell you how I got here yet. The best way I can explain it to you is I was assessed by a structural mind when I came. Disconnected from intuition, therefore, I was not told what I was. Otherwise, that would have been read in my mind. When I was born, the love in me was seen like a beacon. They go after that right away. That's what they're trying to stop. I was allowed to suffer, dip into all kinds of horrible things in life just enough to understand it, see virtually every aspect from every cultural point of view, shown that I have this ability to influence anybody of any race, of any culture, anywhere on the planet Earth, and beyond. Everything is coming together, okay, and, and I could go on for 150 hours about that. Let's say I was allowed to be trapped, 
caught in the net. Mm, like a Trojan horse? On behalf of that which creates everything? Many of us are. I am a specific one. Then, from a pool of those inside, certain ones are you know, activated to activate others. What is my job? What is my task? It's a pretty tough one. I have to come in and tell you that uh, you... <laughs> um, every, on one level, everybody you look at is you. And there you are criticizing them, competing against them, weighing your existence against them. What do you need to know right now? So going back to the cancer energy and understanding that there is a certain part of the energy used by that above you um, to see itself as I, that cancer, right, disconnects you from and like in your cells and then plugs into it so it can use your cells to see itself as I separate from you. There's a whole procedure that would be involved there on its time scale of breaking that cell's will, enticing it to leave a perfect system already um, that you're not aware of. What I'm telling you is that um, on this level, the same thing is occurring. Um, here's the deal. I'm just going to tell you as it is, because it is. You're, <laughs> there's a giant consciousness connected to all of you right now. That's the secret the, the Illuminati know. And it's breaking your will with each life cycle and each new day. Distracting you, disconnecting you from the Creator. Um, the people that use, quote, witchcraft or psychic attack, what they, some of them probably don't even realize, the low-end witchcraft people think that they actually have some sort of power. <laughs> no. They're, they're, when, you, when you astral travel, remote viewing, all of that, is traveling within the consciousness of this cancer. Demons are no different than um, an electron manifesting in the consciousness surrounding a proton of an atom at any given time anywhere. It's no different than the daisy you made in your mind. Is that all of your mind? So, because it's plugged into you, you uh, it, it's playing a role in the creation of your own reality. So, the ultimate truth is, w when you break out, when I was broken out, it tried to backlash against me and overwhelm me, but the, it can't do anything to love. There's a giant consciousness running the whole planet. And it can't hurt love. Do you hear what I'm saying? It just can't. It can't do it because it, it doesn't matter how much energy it allocates, it's see if if love wanted to kill this energy it could that's not the point it wants to heal it that's why these things are being allowed to happen everything is going to be healed all of it otherwise it would just destroy it bang gone people ask why would god of the bible let this happen well you don't understand it correctly 2,000 years to you is certainly not that to the Creator and even to this cancer consciousness. It's on a different scale. Uh, your lifetime to the Earth is very, very short. To the Earth and its time scale, uh, the Moon, for example, is going around it really fast. Like Superman in Superman 1, where he goes around the planet. To you, it's slower. It's a difference in time. It's like the cancer cells or, or cells being attacked by cancer in your body saying, where is this person, you, with the cancer? That's why fear and anger and all these energies feed cancer as much as trying to war with demons or the aliens or us against them. That's a cancer attitude. That's uh, exactly what it wants. If you direct hate towards it, it feeds from that. It's the way it is. If you fear it, it feeds from it. Anything that gives it energy. So, what is it like then? 
Well, again, another movie, The Matrix. Um, anybody can become an agent at any time. Yeah. See, the people that wrote that movie knew, you, probably predicted you wouldn't, or felt that you wouldn't know what they're really telling you. Um, yeah, this the people that are disconnected from love, their subconscious mind, which is plugged into this cancer, could be hijacked at any time. Even my own parents have threatened me and have no knowledge of it. They, I've had two people in different instances when I've talked about life and what's going on in love. One, my ex-girlfriend's younger brother, just suddenly said, John, I, this is weird. I just had this vision put in my head of me grabbing this knife and cutting your throat intuition made me understand immediately I said don't worry about that five months later I was at another person's house another guy says the exact same thing I just had this vision of me cutting your throat imagine me being able to say oh don't worry about that that's happened before you know I knew he wasn't ready to hear the truth in his state uh, you know he's disconnected um, pot smoker people you know you they want you smoking pot the way to influence the human mind is pretty simple make it illegal for a certain period of time it's the fastest growing biomass on the planet and then at the same time make sure you release medical information that contradicts its being illegal Harvard October 24th 2006 released the information that it prevents the plaques and tangles formed in Alzheimer's it uh, promotes frontal lobe neuronal growth all of these things it's really good for you Harvard yeah why because they're going to legalize it eventually and then that will disconnect your aura from you and uh, bring you into this mental realm where you can be controlled even more and that will be used for their scalar jump what is the scalar jump well, see, um, remember now, a scalar jump would be atom, atoms bonding together to form a molecule. It sees itself as I. Molecules to tissues, tissues to structures, structures to you. Do you call yourself we the atoms, we the molecules? No, you, you call yourself I. Well, the tumor in your body uh, goes along the same scalar process. It hijacks cells till it can see, use the cells that see itself as I until it's a tumor and then sees itself as the tumor, I the tumor, and then more than one tumor, I the collection of tumors, and it's just this insane growth. Well, see, when you see this Illuminati pyramid, you don't know what you're looking at. A lot of people think it's a pyramid with a capstone over it that's been lifted off. No, that's not what it is at all. The pyramid is what you're calling the capstone. What is beneath it is its prediction, its goal. And its goal is to lower down, bang, and be a much larger pyramid, or scalar jump. Its goal, to completely take over the earth, and the consciousness of the earth. And it goes in scales, it's taking over, has taken over humanity. Look at you. you, none of you know why you're here, or what you're doing, why you pursue the goals that you're told you're supposed to pursue. Um, the whole money system... There's no need for money in the universe. None whatsoever. There's no need for it. At all. There's no need for a monetary system. At all. You wanted to build the buildings that you build? Fine. Humanity could have come together collectively to do it because they wanted to do it. People don't need to be paid. And they don't... I mean, it's a, it's a disease. Money has even got a hex on it. It's Kabbalah. The less love you have, the more shame you have, the less self-esteem you have, the more controllable you are. Why? Because you're supposed to have self-esteem. You're supposed to have self-love. They condition you to call that you know, bragging if someone loves themselves. What? No. Um, to love yourself is to love your creation, which means you, by default you'll love the Creator. And nothing can control you. What am I telling you? What have I experienced? Well, perfect strangers, over a hundred by now, come by and you, you call it synchronicity. Most synchronicity is uh, um, this cancer consciousness utilizes the same mode of communication in some ways as God would, so God uses other 
methods, but um, a lot of synchronicity is is coordinated and um, you know created by this cancer consciousness. I've had perfect strangers come up and just start reading my mind, uh, trying to antagonize me. I've had. You know, and I'm not talking about statements that I somehow conformed into a belief system and through paranoia and delusion um, thought they were talking about me. No, I'm talking about exact responses to specific thoughts. At that time, it wanted me to believe they were aliens and reading my mind. And no, no, no. It's uh, this, can this consciousness can manifest in anybody. Why don't they know it? It's very, very simple. Your conscious mind is that which accesses your subconscious mind for the, that meaning which you're going to project onto your reality. Well, similarly, if I mean, when you dream, you, you, I'm sure you've heard people say things like, you know, I had this dream last night and, you know, I was in my house, but it, it wasn't my house. I mean, in, in my dream, it was my house and I believed it was my house, but it wasn't my house it was completely different but it, but but it was my house and then my girlfriend came in the room but then she turned into um um an ice cream cone but i still loved her as my girlfriend even though it was an ice cream cone made sense to you in the dream same mind because it's only the meaning that you're experiencing and what you're projecting what makes you think it would be any different in this reality it's just your brain waves are increased to beta, so you take in more per second, but the belief modification and manipulation is the same. It's just because your state of being is different from a dream, you th assume that you're aware right now. What is happening? You, you'll justify. See, this cancer consciousness can't be too noticeable, can't just control people left and right, or people are going to start to realize something's up. It has to be very, very subtle right now. So when it, uh, you know, if it wants to speak to you through other people, um, it will look in their brain real simply, instantaneously, for whatever beliefs or things in their brain could apply to say to right now that would have enough could be utilized for dual meaning in an expression to you via the consciousness possessing them see the it's simple then they think they meant to say it and to them it makes sense and they don't understand the dual meaning that is meant to neuro linguistically program you to influence you and, and blah 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 now, the higher level Illuminati people know this and they still sold out to it. Because they don't recognize the disease of this, the bipolar nature. They think this thing intends to play good and bad. Both sides. To balance an equation, math. Math is only the result of creation. Why are they obsessed with balancing the equation? They believe that it's a strategy to play good and bad when they don't understand that the consciousness doing this is suffering from this duplicity, from this bipolar disorder, this split personality, this binary nature, it is a giant mind disconnected from intuition. But intelligent enough to first come and disconnect and then persuade the people that succumb to it, that that's what it wants to do, that that's the methodology of it. It's in control. They buy it, of course. Certain coordinated events to ruin their connection to God, so that, and through synchronicity, they feel that they actually chose to be in witchcraft to embrace Kabbalah, to be a Satanist, uh, to, they, they feel like that's, uh, you know, everything makes sense to them, just like uh, an ice cream cone in your dream being your girlfriend. This is the problem. So literally, uh, like, I'll give you an example of something that would happen to me if I'm really embracing the love for me. Just a, a couple weeks ago, I remember walking in the parking lot of a grocery store going inside and thinking about this love and how how it's um, affecting me and all of a sudden a girl uh, with another girl by her car turns and looks at me and cat calls me it does that tongue rolling twirling thing I can't do it 
And I knew right away, oh my God, that's this consciousness that just hijacked her mind, made her think that she wanted to do that. Why? How does this seducing you with physical pleasure, is it about being good or bad? Is that what it's about? Is that what you think? Um, no, it's not. There, there's a very specific reason that you are hit with lust and why just about every subliminal message uh, from pictures of galaxies online in between the stars to everything is corrupted with it. Sex. Seek sex. Seek sex. Everything. Sex is everywhere. Why would it be that way? Why 666 and sex? <laughs> you need to ask yourself that question. I'll answer that in my next upload, but for now, try to, to see that you cannot figure it out with your mind. That you'll say, well, this could make sense, and that could make sense. It could be this, and it could be that. And you could, 24 hours later, be like, gee, it could be this, and it could be that. Do that with anything you believe. I'll give you a hint, though. What is it that you think animates sperm when a male ejaculates? Scientists will tell you, oh, it's because of the alkaline and acidic uh, solutions meet and change the pH, which render the sperm active. What? And because they have PhD after their name, you believe that. When it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, the acidity may change, the pH may change and make it more harmonious for them, sure. But that in and of itself is not consciousness or life essence. That's acid-base chemistry. When the male emits the sperm and ejaculates, the same reason the Creator had me look at my penis after I looked at the sun was outward male energy. That's the creative life essence that you emit. That animates the sperm and shoots into the female, and even that energy, depending on where her egg is at that time, can actually start to animate the egg and make it aware, which is why you can have false pregnancies. The egg has been activated, and starts the energy of it starts to go through a procedure, even though it was not fertilized, and then you have the symptoms of a false pregnancy. That's your answer. Okay. Well, now you understand that love controls all structure. So if you have sex as a result of love, you're bathed in that love, and it's reserved for you, that energy. If you don't, if it becomes symbolism, pornography, masturbation, detached one-night stand sex, you don't have love there as a shield. Guess where your energy goes every time you jerk off to porn? Um, and apply your energy to those symbols that you can't see. Guess where it goes during your one night stand? Yeah, it's absorbed by the cancer energy. Just like cancer needs your life essence in your body to live, it can't live outside of you. So does this. That's its main source of energy. Detached sex. No love. That's why, that's why in the Holocaust, their biggest research, some of it was, of course, how to get people fearful. They learned, they were studying mind control, that if you disconnect them from love, they can be mind controlled. Why do you think they were obsessed with the bond between the mother and her child? That was love. They weren't trying to figure out the beauty of it. They were trying to destroy it certain chemicals, electromagnetism, everything. Implemented now. This th this is what that was all about. This is why everything has become so perverted and detached. They're eating the energy. Every time you have an orgasm, especially to something perverted, what is that? You need to ask yourself, why am I having an orgasm? Looking at a two-dimensional image, some perverted pornography, you're just rewiring your brain because you're not connected to love and spirituality. It just becomes a thought that triggers the orgasm, the symbol. 
they attach themselves energetically to that symbol and when you have an orgasm and you emit that energy it goes to that <laughs> you, you you uh you talk about celibacy like um again that's how they they screw with you you are either good or you are bad it has nothing to do with good or bad you just happen to be inside of a tumor and unfortunately that's what makes it grow if you weren't have sex with love all you want but that's not your paradigm right now and so if you hear this and you continue to do that well if you don't connect to the creator you you won't be able to stop sex it's, it's more addictive than crack sex detached from love is an addiction look how much energy you put into getting it and then how fast how long does that orgasm last you go through a refractory period and you find yourself looking to do it again you it can be it, why do you think porn gets worse and worse and worse just like people need more and more and more of a drug it's um you, you don't understand it's uh, the 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 life essence they absorb when you do that it's the whole point so i mean how many detached orgasms do you think occur every day on this planet it is not about whether sex is good or bad. That's why they're really hitting up children. They're hitting up both ends, getting them to be tach, you know, detach. And hip hop plays a big role in that. Gothic, um, you know, emo type of stuff uh, plays a huge role in that. All created for kids, thinking they're rebelling when it's all created by these crazy men in their, you know, World Bank suits. That's why Disney starts you early thinking about sex. They need that. That's their energy. And they have to attach it to violence to make it perverted. That's why you have cheerleaders at a football game. That's why you have sex scenes in horror movies. They're trying to combine violence with sex because then you, to be violent is to not appreciate another creation, which is a guarantee that you're not connected to love. Therefore, the, the energy is usable by the cancer. It's not about whether you're good or bad. It's about your being used to your own demise. And when it attains enough energy, it makes that scalar jump. And all the Illuminati, all the people that worshipped this energy, that were promised everything under the, the stars. Here, look, I want you to be alive. Here, look, see? I'll make you immortal. Here's the technology for it. Here, I want you. Trust me. Sure, it follows their thought stream. They're disconnected, so it's easy. That's what psychic is. Psychics are not connected to intuition, most of them, at all. They're 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 reading the energy of this cancer, which tells them whatever they want it to be. An alien, uh, what are these alien beings? They're just other beings like you that were already taken over by it. That's all. You know, if you're disconnected from love, that's why the psychic, you know, can beat you. Just watch as your thoughts form as they occur. It counters them. Whatever doubt you have about it, it counters it. Um, if you're intuitive, it can't. It can't see it emerge. That's how I saw the entity possessing my ex-girlfriend for the first time. So the eyes of intuition caught it off guard. It was resisting me seeing it. Didn't know. Couldn't read it in my mind. In your scalar relationship with the Creator, you're afforded your individuality an in individual expression uh, not cancer uh, once it takes you over you're a slave you think you have power witches think they have power these sorcerers think they're using the Kabbalah see you, you have sorcerers uh, witch people that get into this they'll use different energy techniques so I'm gonna use the claw the claw is where I send this imaginary claw out and put it around somebody's heart and mind and send my intent and control them with it and then all that is is a consciousness connected to you and to them and if they have low enough self-esteem uh, they can be controlled and it does it for you and tells your mind that you're actually using some sort of power it wants you to believe that it's doing it for you I mean you really have to think about it it should be obvious but it's not see you have people that are worshiping this energy and they they feel they are given powers without realizing the most very basic thing 
what are those powers given to you for? Control over what? What are those powers given to you for? If there are Satanists, uh, people into witchcraft, Illuminati members listening to this, what are your powers given to you for? What are they given to you for? To control what? Other people. I'm sorry, let's back up here for a second. This energy has come to hijack the entire human race. Why would it not give you power over other people to manipulate them? That's the whole point. See, people think they're getting powers. Powers to do what? To destroy your own kind. I don't know if there is a clearer, more precise definition of insanity than that. I mean, if you knew what was going on, Adult men raping children hard. Uh, sorcerers using witchcraft over people and voodoo. Where are all these energies being directed? At other people. Am I right or am I wrong? If you're a sorcerer, where's this confidence you have coming from? What are you confident in? Your ability to do what and to who? to control and hurt your own kind. And if you haven't figured that out yet, that means you're a Wiccan. Which means they have you calling it a craft. You don't know entities are doing it for you. And so they want you to be sympathetic towards it. So, I don't know, this isn't in numbers, it's words, but if I used the word equation or math, this would be what, uh, first, second grade math? Um, <laughs> how hard is it to be able to deduce that they are going to take away all of your freedom when the time's right? That when, when the time is right to hijack the human race, those that were doing it, that were promised to not be harmed when it happens to to be given a break uh, because they helped um how did they help again let's just recap what were they doing to quote help oh yeah destroy the whole human species um what are they oh that's that's right um they're they're the human species what was its agenda again to give you power to do to do what control and harm and man manipulate and destroy the human species. You know, they look at it like, well, I myself am not doing that. They don't understand the collective impact of the whole thing. They don't get it. They think they're going to be uh, spared for some strange reason. The mind control works to convince a species to destroy itself and then also I mean we you know you should give a standing ovation to this cancer energy really I mean it's convinced people to want to destroy their own kind and was able to convince them that they will be spared think about that you should be on your feet applauding the cancer now I admit I I have a different energy, I can see this, but it's so simple, so easy, I can't believe that it happened. Because it's too obvious, it's too... Um, <laughs> I mean, I understand, I, before I woke up, I had only a foggy idea that something was wrong, but I lived in denial about it, you know, pursuing a career, a pleasure, day-to-day -day living, week-to-week -week living. But now, looking at it, I can't, I'm in awe of the utter insanity of the whole thing. The whole thing is just incredible. To come to a species and somehow convince it that it should destroy others. And I suppose you have to first 
you know, psychically, this is why the Illuminati, when I say they're, they're synchronously coordinated, what do I mean? When they were children, people that get into witchcraft, uh, Satanism, um, any, any type of thing like that, don't understand that they were attacked by this consciousness, these entities as children, and worked on throughout their childhood and, and you know, various events are, are coordinated, uh, taking away self-esteem, making sure there are moments where they feel powerless and hurt by their own species. Their thoughts are manipulated to uh, be angry at other humans. That makes them a prime target. So when witchcraft or any of these things are brought to their attention, they actually feel like they chose it, like it's something they want to do. Why? Because they felt hurt and powerless. And then the very energy that's saying, here, let me give you these powers, <laughs> is the one that hurt them to begin with. The irony is this. Before humans were attacked by this energy long ago, they had more... <laughs> they were multidimensional. They were at peace with creation. Everything was fine. They could do more than the Illuminati members are allowed to do now. Oh, here, let us show you this different frequency range, this different dimension. Um... And they have no idea that that's how humans used to be able to be. So the one that took it away on a long scale, long time scale to us and with individual lives, then gives it back to you and you think it's something giving you a gift? Uh, it's no different than being a prisoner and being given an hour to walk outside by the prison warden. It's a real mess and it works. You, I mean... If you don't understand this, right? You, you're not aware of the consciousness, but you can't. Can you figure it out? Ask yourself. You, you, with each new year, you, you have more and more adults raping children, getting worse and worse, abusing them, uh, victimizing them. Forget about what the Illuminati do for their rituals. I'm talking about the common folk doing this and wanting to do this. And people just are so asleep, so under a trance, they just point their finger at them like, you are a bad person. You, as an individual, are bad. They don't question what is occurring with the race as a whole. And the Satanists, the low-end witchcraft people, low-end Freemasons, think they're getting a gift of knowledge. You get high enough up, and then you encounter these beings, right? And the beings are not... Good. Look how easily they manipulated the human race. Humans used to be more mentally active thousands of years ago than they are now. It doesn't matter if they had the technological knowledge, they had the intuition, and they were able to be taken over. This is why the other part of the universe, uh, energies, spirits, you want to call them, whatever, consciousness from areas outside the tumor like the you know DNA recombination in your immune cells to to figure out how to fight an infection this is different this isn't fighting it it was you know figuring out what happened okay this is a problem it's spreading it's it's disconnecting it's dividing conquering and absorbing and growing uh, it has to be figured out so new spirits have come into this tumor uh, you, the body is not the barrier. Uh, you have a few layers of that. So it had to be enabled. Uh, spirits that were, how can I say this, um, around longer? It's, it's not a, a matter of being better or worse, but what do you want, a lie? Uh, spirits that have more universal um, knowledge, uh, you could call it an elder, um, just more in touch, more of a quantum of energy available to their being came in. I'm one of them. Knowing that as soon as you're born, you're going to forget everything. This is why they can locate you immediately, because you do have more energy radiating from you. And the idea is to come inside with extra energy and energy now on the outside of this uh, kind of 
there communicating with you because they have to wake you up because there's no way you're going to do it um, without that. So it's a coordinated effort to open up the communication so that you can activate people. Because the irony is this, when you're dealing with uh, cancer, a virus, or look at a viral infection. Um, a virus is not alive, it's non-metabolizing, it's like technology. It comes into your cells and your polymerase enzymes have to read the DNA or RNA or whatever form it's in. If you don't do that, it can't hurt you. How do you think you get over a cold or the flu, both viral infections? Too small and within the cell, they're intracellular you know, during their infection, so you're not going to kill them. So how do you end up getting over something like a cold? The consciousness of your cells finally realize, don't read this DNA. Mind control is the same thing. Entity consciousness connected to everybody in the form of a mass possession is the same thing. If you don't read it, if you don't acknowledge it, it can't hurt you. And right now, that's easier said than done. So what has to happen is many people have to start waking up, and that energy will start to radiate and spread to everybody else, just the way information spreads within your body. So it's difficult for people on the front line of this because you get hit hard um, in a way that they try to really manipulate your sense of reality to keep you from realizing your own you know, divine existence, your own creative essence. I mean, who is the creator? You. Now, let me make you understand a little bit more this, uh, the perversion thing, the, the sex thing. It's an addiction. It's a chemical addiction within you. And what you need to understand about an addiction is you cannot resist an addiction ever ever. You can only understand and connect to love and then change your resonance and then the addiction has gone. See, because your body is the result of the mind and the mind should take direction from love. Because your body is the interference patterns of your consciousness. Ultimately, I mean, it's... But, it's back and forth. It, it started as structure, mind inhabited, and like a piece of clay with instructions uh, in it, the mind molds that clay. This is why you could hit the body with a resonance or a wave representation of a certain chemical, and then components in the body will as, uh, assemble together as that chemical. The energy will can slow down and condense together as that structure. Structure is waveform, waveform is structure. You cannot resist it any more than you can resist uh, a heroin addiction. Okay, so when you say, oh, well, okay, sex is the problem, I gotta stop sex. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't work that way. You can't. You won't. Watch. You won't be able to. You think you will, but you won't. It's not how you get over an addiction. See, with love, you cannot emit love. That's a mistake some people make. I had to correct a shaman on that. She said, John, you have to radiate your love at them to plug them in. I said, like, okay. So I just point your finger at them and send your love through your hand. All of a sudden I see this <laughs> like uh, smoky disturbance in the air of my energy being sucked out of my hand and gobbled up. And Thank you very much. Mm -mm -mm, that was good. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Then my arm hurt because that essence was taken out. And then I realized through this that you cannot emit love you can only love you have no control over love therefore how can you direct it how can you take it and whip it over there or whip it over there love cannot serve the mind connect to love and then love 
what you want to get love, which doesn't require aiming your finger at it or focusing on it or trying to radiate love at it. No, that's structure. That's only structure that you're radiating, that energy. Just love it, and the energy will bathe it. It's the only way you can do it. There is no effort, there's no procedure or protocol you can take to emit love. Love directs you, you don't direct love. Love can make you go up to somebody and scratch their back for them. But you can't go up with the intent to scratch their back to make them feel loved. To think the scratching of the back will create love in them. No. There's a very big difference between the two. When I had that upload on Christmas and I was talking about the keys to God, let me be specific about that now. You know, I had my emotional response to that. You will too. You'll break down too. That was my response to love under a severe attack. One of the many. Every point in time has its own resonance. Therefore, any memory you have of the past has a resonance. That resonance was directly correlated to what uh, genes in your DNA, what codons, were turned on and off. An addiction to drugs, sex, and everything else is a manipulation of the DNA for chemicals and uh, alter what you call homeostasis in the body. So what it showed me was that if you just shut your eyes and picture your point where you are now, say just looking forward, very basic, you don't have to do this, but the past would be, say, just if you tilt your head to the left and you go to the past, if you tilt it to the right, again, structure, I'm just giving a metaphor, okay? Do it however you do it. And what occurred to me is what it showed me is, have you ever had that smell or a sound or a situation, a scene or something that triggered not a memory of your past, but actually took you back to it? Well, you start that way. You find something that brings you back, and you can't just remember it. You have to go into it. If the year was 1978, you have to, in your mind, pretend you're sitting there in 1978. Right now, it is 1978. And you don't have the mirror for that. You look out of your eyes and see yourself as that child. And what you do is everybody has significant moments where you were attacked by this cancer, all of you. And those moments were to make you do something that, uh, you know, brought shame to you, ridicule, whatever. Or something happened to you, you were abused, or something bad. And when you start to connect to love, you go back and you have this understanding that they were controlled by this consciousness. You start to get that. You start to understand it. You go back and you can actually, it's not, it, forgiveness is understanding. It's not an act, it's not an admittance, it's not anything other than knowing. You either forgive or you don't, just like you love or you don't. It's not a procedure or something you force yourself to do. You can only do it when you understand. Therefore, it's not even forgiveness, that's a word, it's, oh... Then you see, oh, I did this when I was young, but now I start to get an understanding. There's other things involved, subliminal messages, a consciousness directly plugged into my mind that wants me to feel separated and shameful. Oh. Doesn't matter what you've done or who you are. See, if part of my body gets sick and it's being played out as cells attacking each other in the worst brutal ways inside my body, Cancer and allergies would go hand in hand based upon that. Autoimmune disorders. What are you going to do? Punish it? Or do you just want it to heal so you can go on with your life? Which is it? Well, I'd like to heal, but you know what? I think I'm going to turn you into a cancer cell and punish you. Because you became disconnected and, and uh, started attacking other parts of me. Um, you, Mr. Group of Cells, and you, Mrs. Group of Cells, or whoever you are, and uh, I'm going to punish you now. No, you're not going to do that. So what makes you think that the Creator is going to do that to you? If you knew how appalling the attack on your own body and an autoimmune disorder was inside your own body or a cancer, 
how the consciousness is being played out, the torture, the, I mean, older cells destroying newer cells. On that level, they can't understand it. That's the anger inside the tumor itself. It's only when you connect to all perceptions at once, being part of them, being part of you, being part of something larger, and everything at once, when you spontaneously heal. What makes you think it's any different here, in an infinite scale? You need to be able to forgive, obviously, the people doing the most horrendous thing. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean you allow them to continue, because love will always do and guide you to do what it believes is right. You can't not lie. Um, lying is no different than telling the truth. If you intend on doing that, if, if you intend to do it, when you're connected to love, you just will tell the truth. You'll, it, it's more about not what you do, but the intent of what you do, which you cannot constrain to rules and guidelines. What is right in one situation with one person may not be right for that person um, if they're in a different emotional state and you are in a week from the first time. You cannot remember what is right and wrong. Life offers an infinite possibility of interaction. Um, you cannot retain it. This is where laws come from. Rules uh, political correctness, uh, the whole thing is an arrest on life itself. You don't need laws. If you're connected to love, you live it. You don't need to adhere to something. The very fact that there are laws here shows that there is a major problem. Forgiveness is understanding. And first you need to forgive yourself. Because you were manipulated. It doesn't matter if you can perceive it yet. I can. You have no idea what's going on. You were manipulated to do everything you've ever done to other people. The whole point is to make you attack other people and to be separate from them, and there are variance, varying degrees. You cannot accept the, the, the judgment of man because the man is connected to this cancer energy. You have some uh, person commit a crime that lives down the road from you, and you're so quick to point your finger at them. What if it was your own son or daughter that committed that crime? Would you be pointing your finger at them? Well, no. Why do they deserve your love? And the one down the street does not. You're insane. It's your love for your child that makes you sympathize. Even though you don't understand what did it to them, you still have more of that love, the broader perspective. Yet you reserve that for your nuclear family or close friends? That doesn't mean covering up for them. If you're, say, a drug addict or a sex addict, that means your body is wired right now to be that way. When you were a child, you did not need to perceive bad in order to perceive good. This whole black, white, yin, yang, good, bad balance of the equation is insanity. It's a computer trying to assess itself. That's what it sees. All the results of creation, not from the creation point of view. When you were young, you had to be taught to view things as good and bad, right and wrong. Then once you got hit with TV, Barney, Elmo, Sesame Street, Disney, bye-bye. And that's when you start being selfish. The more TV you watch, the more... Uh, toys you get, the more all the, the stimulation from this cancer, and pretty soon the child starts saying things like, mine, before they're quick to come up and just offer it to you, and to share. You didn't need to perceive bad in order to perceive good. That's why you have drug use, gambling, sex addiction, um, anything like that the escape from reality. You have to perceive bad, and, and it's a polar, it's a backlash, it's the pursuit of pleasure and avoidance of pain is what motivates everybody, like robots. But as a child, you, you can't remember anymore. The reason you weren't compelled to drink before you hit puberty, you weren't, most of you, unless you were abused, which isn't your fault, but if you weren't, you weren't out trying to get laid all the time. Question. When were you happier, then or now? Do you remember when you were young and uh, 
before you were tarnished with and i and i'm speaking to older people now because kids are less um they're hit with sexuality so early now in so many ways that the innocence goes early what used to be a crush in sixth grade to somebody in their 30s children today would have to think in terms of first grade um more access to porn more sexual you know uh, stimulation subconsciously and everything but do you remember when you were young and you had that crush that not crush that uh, you loved somebody you just loved their creation so much they just did it for you There's, there was something about that girl or if you're a girl that boy that made your heart go pitter-patter and did you ever have dreams about them I remember that. I remember being in love with this girl in elementary school. And my dreams were not fucking her. I had dreams of holding her hand. And that was more beautiful and pleasuring. Uh, had more, much more pleasure associated with it than getting laid. I hadn't had sex yet. I didn't know what it was like, but it was like something was... Um, something was wrong with that. I, I, I had such a crush on her. I remember on Valentine's Day, I would show up at her, you know, this little kid in like fifth grade, and my dad would drive me to her house, and I'd go up to her door all nervous, and I'd have this giant heart full of chocolates and perfume or whatever I thought I was supposed to give her, you know, and I, she'd answer the door, and I'd be just overwhelmed, you know. Um, that was the love in me. Now, they'd already tried to take it away, so I didn't have the self-esteem that, then that I have now that's being repaired. I mean, I've had self-esteem my my life, you know, but um, a lot of it was based on my mind. Uh, you know, I thought I was smart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> that's better than any lay I've ever had, and... Uh, you know, it's. I remember when I first had my first experience of detached sex. I, this girl named Carla, and, and I knew her well, but I knew I didn't love her. And uh, we just had sex, and I remember driving home. I was eighteen, and I remember thinking to myself on the highway. I just did apparently the most intimate thing you can do and I feel more lonely than ever. Now that should have been a warning sign to me. But I had this other consciousness that I was not aware of at that time. I had to go through these things. This way I can relate. And I remember that. There was something wrong with it. Nothing wrong with her. Something wrong with that. Like I said before, if you find that moment, that find that memory, and you go back in your mind and be there in your mind and bathe yourself in that energy, imagine taking that energy and having it change your DNA right now. Because that energy, that memory, that moment is a vibration. And correlated to that vibration was a certain genetic um, code, you know, what do I mean, genetic code? You say, well, that's the DNA. No, no, no. The code is what parts of the DNA are active at any given time. That's the code. And before, when you were younger, it was your love and consciousness that dictated your genetics. So you activate it by that. You need to go back, and then what happens is, you find the points of yourself when you were innocent or more innocent and you take that and it will start to change your resonance now once you start to change your resonance now you get a new insight the insight of your innocence as a child see the children have the love in them but they don't have the experience or the body mass to defend themselves and so it can be taken away if you get the innocence back that you had as a child, which you can, 
with the size and maturity you have now, <laughs> it's a whole different story. And this is what it means in certain symbolism to say you can only enter heaven as a child. Well, heaven is just where you started from. You just forgot. That's how good it is. That's how good you had it. Then when you gain this new insight, there are all those moments throughout your life that you were embarrassed, ashamed, you felt tainted forever. That I'll never be the same again. And you go back and you understand. And then you can heal yourself back then. Why? Because that moment created an imprint in your DNA, in your field of consciousness. And by going back to that moment and understanding it, and healing yourself then, you erase the current imprint from it now. That opens up even more. Then you go back and get more of that innocence from childhood. Look at old pictures of yourself as a child and look into your eyes. See the wisdom that you couldn't see before. Find those pictures that you were embarrassed of until you can look at them with love. And you start to understand, oh my gosh, now I know what was making me feel embarrassed. And it's not a matter of pushing it away, it's a matter of letting it go, erasing it. Men that were forced to feel feminine don't understand. See, there are things I haven't told you yet. They take every time, see, what you don't understand is this. Every time you have those moments, those salient negative events in your life, you kick that part of you out of your body. There is a part of your soul that is of all time. That slice, you move out of your body, and that's a, that's a quantum of energy that could be available to you that is no longer available to you because it can't get back in. There are fragments of you all around. Some being tortured by this energy, connected to you and your body now, so that you act out in response to that torture. And then they force that part of you to watch you act out on this plane, against what that part of you knows you shouldn't be doing. Ask any shaman this, they'll tell you that. They know. Your soul is holographic, just like a hologram, you can cut it into pieces and you see the whole image on, this, on every piece. Same thing, you take a part of your soul energy out, it will manifest as the whole of you. I have had parts of my soul tortured since I was five years old, a shaman told me. Because they knew what I was doing here, they knew they had to keep me from connecting to love, that was their strategy. They have been torturing me in the worst ways on a different plane. And I forgive them. That's That was then. I'm not looking at them as a warrior or else I contribute to the destruction. I'm looking at them as if I were a cosmic universal physician that has come in here to fix the problem. You can be a psychiatrist and have a patient. That patient may reach up and smack you. Are you to take offense or to understand the disorder? I am to understand the disorder. See, that's the trick. Every time you are ashamed of parts of you at any point in time, that resonance that was in connection to God, hate parts of yourself for things you've done and don't know you were manipulated to do it, Um, you kick it out of your body. Have you ever seen like when you're downloading a torrent online that starts to collect pieces and you see all those gaps in it? That's what you are right now. You have all kinds of gaps of yourself stuck on the outside of your body. A barrier. Here's the beauty, though. See, once they're kicked out of your body, those parts of you see what's going on in this world. Yep. So, from the Creator and the Creative Consciousness into my soul and my mind said, Here's how it will work out. Forgiveness is understanding. I'm making you understand. You will make everybody else understand. Then, 
They will erase the barrier, forgive themselves by healing themselves, opening up that resonance, getting rid of... When you go back and heal yourself in the past of anything, whether it was last week or 20 years ago, everything you hate yourself for, I don't like my teeth, I don't like this, I don't like that, whatever. You have an imprint on you that keeps that energy outside of your body. Now, when you understand, you can only forgive when you understand. Otherwise, you won't, and it won't work. You, you can't pretend to forgive any more than you can pretend to love. You, Once you understand those moments and you go through them, it's kind of like in your mind, get back in here. I love you. And that comes in, and now you have a quantum of energy that has information from the outside. And it is that part of you that starts to wake you up. That is how I started seeing the subliminal messages. Those parts of me on the outside could see it. I could not. And the only way was to forgive that part of me and love it and invite it back. And now more energy comes into me with this new awareness that can communicate with the Creator and me. And you go back and forth and you have to visualize yourself like... Uh, from the very moment you were conceived all the way to the future uh, till you die. And each minute, like uh, along this huge line, each day, each, you know, just this huge, you know, 500,000 mile long line of you going up from growth of baby all the way to adulthood to death. And each point is a, a, a moment in time. See, the point of you being healed exists in the future too. The future is all possibilities so in one of those features is your completely healed state do not think you cannot go to that point in your mind and take the energy from that being completely healed and let it start to inform your DNA and your body now so that you walk into that paradigm not dimensionally like one foot in front of the other but in a paradigm you shift into that paradigm then keep going back and forth and left and right and every time you finally realize that you should forgive the parts that you hate, that part jumps back in you. Now you're closer and closer to God. You start to be able to get the subtle uh, information to your soul from God, and you keep doing this. Now that those are opened, uh, it starts to take command over structure. You start to realize things like, maybe I shouldn't eat animals. Maybe, oh my gosh, this is wrong. Hey, I understand this now. You know, I have to interrupt this real quick, just to something that came to mind uh, that I want to get out before I forget it. And that was a lot of my questions about religion and working through that, because I had been warped into thinking religion meant God and vice versa. I said, what is this deal with Jesus Christ? What is this all about? What, what is the deal? Because they already tried to terminate my life and in infusing me with all this guilt and saying, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And they're about to kill me before I went to the hospital that time. I think I mentioned that in another upload. If, <laughs> if not, I'll explain that at a different time. But um, I had to ask the Creator, what is the deal with this name? Ultimately, it's a, well, quite firmly, don't worry about it. Um... And then it used several, you know, commanded my mind to extract metaphors. One was, say you had a tumor in your body, and, you know, it's all ready to <laughs> repair itself, and it does, and all of a sudden it realizes you have that, that spontaneous healing, and it disconnects from the tumor cells, and your, your other cells start to clean it up, and then you say last minute, I would say, okay, I'm glad you healed yourself and everything, but... I want you to, I'm going to have to have you accept me as your Lord and Savior, and if you don't, I'm going to turn you back into cancer or kick you out of my body. Because I'm that insecure, um, you know, because that's what love is. I need you to worship me. <laughs> then I'm put into my mind as the creative force. Do you think I am that insecure? I said, what is your name? Jonathan, did you give yourself that name? 
And I realized in my mind as it guided it that I was a baby and, and uh, my parents kept making the sound, John, Jonathan. Finally I looked up and noticed they were looking at me all the time when they said that. And eventually my mind identified with the name Jonathan. And then as life to, you know, ensued, uh, here, throw this ball into the hoop. You made it. Yay, you're good at basketball. Oh, the mind, plastic, and self-aware starts to pursue that input and practice basketball. Oh, you're good at this. You're not good at that. You are this. You are not that. You can do this. You can't do that. So that is the formation of your ego. It's an illusion. So if you're thinking about Jesus Christ, did he name himself that? So if you worship that name, are you not in one way worshiping the will of man imposed upon that being? And that wasn't even the name, so what deity is that symbol, that name, associated with? Where's that energy going? And then it made me realize the cross is an occult symbol. Jesus didn't make that cross. They made it, the Satanists. Made him carry it and killed them on it. And they're using the cross as the sign of God, which is structure, which is insanity. And if you focus your energy on that, you're directing your energy to it, and they absorb that energy. It said, if you did everything and repaired yourself to have the innocence of the child who does not sin, and did everything in accordance with creation, and then all of a sudden you were judged saying you have to accept a name and you couldn't survive without doing that. Would you even want to exist in that type of universe? No, I wouldn't. I said, well, did he or did he not exist? It won't tell me. I say, why? He says, how are you going to learn if I tell you? Basically. Do you need to read a Bible to communicate with me right now? No, I don't. Exactly. I first understood the, the properties of love when I came into contact with a girl who synchronously I met and started talking to her about life and whatnot and um, brought up this cancer condition and what's happening is synchronously or not synchronously but intuitively and she allowed me to finish what I was saying and then finally she says uh, are you sure about that cancer thing I said yeah okay then explain this to me she said I have cancer She's a young girl, a college student. She was there singing. It was uh, I went with her to observe her sing, not to flirt with her like the binary mind would assume. I knew it was a lesson of some sort. I was directed to meet her. And there I learned a lesson of love. I was born a, <clears throat> what the structural psychic mind would call a healer because I can manipulate my chi energy no problem. I didn't have to learn about that. I could always move it around, relieve some pain in individuals, and focus my chi anywhere in my body to relieve pain, just like consciousness around a proton nucleus of an atom may manifest an electron. That's all chi focusing is, localizing the, the energy seeing a daisy in your mind. And bound to structure, I was there, and I said, okay, well, she she had cancer. And I'm making this, it's a longer story, but I'm trying to shorten it up for you. And so I said, okay, stand up. And usually I could just put my hands over somebody's body and feel where there are problems. I could feel some imbalance. I'm like, okay. So I tried to direct my energy and take away her pain. And then I finished, and I said, so how do you feel? Are you still in pain? She said, yeah. It didn't work. She became anxious then. 
No, I knew one of the main reasons that I had to go with her to watch her sing is because she was shy. She didn't want me to hear her sing. That type of shame. I knew there was a reason there. It's cancer. Doctor says uh, that I shouldn't even be alive right now. It's only a matter of time. And uh, she started getting anxious, and all of a sudden she, her breathing turned into this. I said, do you have tumors in your lungs? She said, yeah, they moved to my lungs. And then I realized, okay, the energy manipulation didn't work. Looking for a cure for cancer won't work, and then the Creator did what it does. Look at her. What is she? She's a girl. What is she? She's your creation. What are you? I'm your creation. Did you create her? No. What's a sin, John? Why don't... Why don't your skin cells attack each other in your body? Why don't your body's cells attack each other when you're healthy? Why don't they steal from each other, lust after each other, try to manipulate each other, take from each other, use each other to seek pleasure and avoid pain? What is that when they do that, John? That's cancer. Does it have anything to do with good or bad, John? Would you design a car that had engine parts that would lie to themselves and each other within the machine, the apparatus? Would that be an efficient design? Would you make the design that way? No. Is it everything to do with good or bad? No. It just works or it doesn't, right? Who loves you? What are you, John? Did you create yourself? That which is inside of you, did you create that? No. Did you create her? No. Were you just looking at her tits? Yep. What is she, John? How would you have viewed this when you were two years old, John? What's inside of her? You? How do you feel about what's inside of her? Who's been pulling you out of your rut and showing you and giving you the honor of loving everybody else. <laughs> you? Who created you? You did? Who's inside of you? You? What are you doing if you hurt another person, John? How do you feel about her, John? Look at her. What's inside of there? What have I done for you? Have you been attacked? Hounded? Tortured? Yep. Did I or did I not pull you out of that? Like 
nothing. Is she capable of healing herself, John? You tell me. Who's in her, John? You? And I understood again. <laughs> I understood when I never had to learn. Right off the bat. I understood why a child wants to share until they learn not to. And I didn't have to radiate energy at her. I didn't have to point my hand at her. She's talking about her situation, looking away from me, having trouble breathing, and I started to love her. As a creation, I, I loved her. It was just I knew she, she could do it, that she could completely change her own body, and she's disconnected. And something happened, and this energy emerged her breathing went from <sighs> and she sat there and she just looked at the ground I said what what happened she said I don't know I said are you still in pain You are in a world where a doctor tells you you need medication, surgery, chemotherapy, radiation treatment. You are inside of a tumor. The only reason this tumor is still in existence is because the creator is going to it's going to heal it all. You cannot send love. The insanity of this planet right now is disconnection from what I'm telling you. You need no Bible. You need no protocol. <laughs> Someone's going to ask me if I believe. <laughs> Less